It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. I really don't need to tell you what the show's going to be about. All you need to know is Patrick Norton's here. Father Robert Balliser is here. Ian Thompson is here. And they're all in studio, and we're going to have a blast. Twit is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 681, recorded Sunday, August 26th, 2018. That grips my muffin. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Quip, the first subscription electric toothbrush accepted by the American Dental Association. Visit getquip.com slash twit to get your first refill pack free when you purchase any Quip electric toothbrush. And by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash twit. And by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on wordpress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month and you can get 15% off any new plan at wordpress.com slash twit. And by Betterment. The investing tool for those who refuse to settle for average investing. Sign up today at betterment.com slash twit and get up to one year managed free. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the week's tech news. All in studio today. It's uh, I feel like this might be uh, foreshadowing my last twit ever. You know, like this is how it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have Father Robert on my right doing the last unction. Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit. <laughs> His la this is your this last is. twit for a this while. This is my last hurrah. I, uh, I mean, I, I, it's hard to say last of anything. I don't think it's really going to be your last. No. I, in fact, I just did a course on this over the summer of how Jesuits used to go, and that's the last you would see of them. Well, we live in the modern world now, right. and I'm flying back and forth to the States 15 times a year. Plus, y'all live longer. We live longer. <laughs> well, I might not. Be he's, he's going to Rome. Uh, he's going to be working in the, the Vatican, in uh, Vatican yes. City. Yes. Uh, but you will be coming back here. I know you're next going to be back for Dreamforce, then CES. So you, we're going to see more of you, I hope. Right. Yeah, I, I booked a gig at Dreamforce. So I'm doing a, a talk for nice. a company that wants me to talk about the next generation of CRM. Um, and I, I figured as long as I'm in town, I'll stay for Oculus Connect. Scintillating. <laughs> I know, right? But what, it's, it's just so it's so odd that the, the, the guy who goes to the Vatican to be in charge of technology is talking about the next generation of CRM. It's just well, it's just <laughs> it, odd. Yeah, it is odd. And but but you should come because you can be there with at least twenty to thirty other people listening. To <laughs> no, time. you'll be Pretty fun. Fantastic. That'll be fun. <laughs> Although Thank Dreamforce, you, Robert. they did have uh, a couple of years ago. They had uh, who's the guy, the guy that did White Wedding, the song? Oh, um, uh, Billy Idol. Billy Idol. Yes. He played Dreamforce, and he changed the lyrics of the song to "It's a nice day for CRM." Oh. That's all you need. That's, that's really all you need. It, it yeah. was it, it was that bad. It was just like okay, right. Or the just, check was that big. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Let, you're off the artistic register into the cupboard with you with the other <laughs> advertising nice megans. <laughs> that's Ian Thompson from the Register.co.uk. Where he's now editor for news editor, right? Yep. Yep. Great yep. to have you, Ian, as always. Recovering from DEF CON, but yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, we're we'll asked about that. And of course, Patrick Norton's also here from techthing.com. Hey. So it's kind of an all star panel. Really wonderful to have you. Well, Did you go to DEF CON this year? I was year? at DEF CON. Yeah, all three of us were at DEF CON. Oh, all yeah. three of you. Yeah. Well, I then was being we stalked should... at DEF CON by somebody. So. <laughs> <laughs> we were at it. We were at a, 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 a one Pony of the Awards. Talk, the Pony oh. Awards. And I started taking pictures of Ian, and I could see him looking around to see where I. So I started taking video of him looking around. And <laughs> well, I was on Twitter, and I was just like, "You're oh, supposed to get the back permission." Of Ian Thompson's head, and it's first, like, this is true. This is true. <laughs> Unless it's that? funny. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the rule. All depends on who you're taking a picture of, and whether or not they consider it funny. <laughs> Can we get a, a taller microphone for oh, Robert? No. Robert? It's like you have a. Or we'll just put a. We'll just put a dictionary or something I like underneath. The baby mic. You're kind of your microphone's way down there. <laughs> it makes me feel so dainty. So. Uh, <laughs> Did you both go to, did you all go to Black Hat and DEF CON or just DEF CON? And B-Sides, yeah. And oh, B-Sides. So there's yeah. now three conferences all in Vegas at the same time. Yeah. So three was... conferences you can't get into anything at unless you wait nine hours in line for. Well, uh, well I, not B-Sides. B-Sides. I was going to say, B-Sides you could get into. And I'm kind of biased because I was presenting a couple of a couple right. of talks there. But DEF CON was just ridiculous. I yeah. mean, so what are the three different conferences and what, are the, what is the role of each? Well, B-Sides started up as a conference for people who couldn't get into Black Hat, right. but in fact has metamorphosized into 
stuff which is slightly too edgy for Black Hat. So right. that's quite fun. Black Hat's more corporate. Black Hat's RSA well, with hookers, well, basically. Yeah, Black Hat's turned into a place... No, Black Hat's where people... A friend of mine said, Black Hat's where you go... There's robots in the audience. Yeah, please. <laughs> okay, with robot hookers as well. <laughs> Black Hat's where you go if you're trying to find your next job. B-Sides yeah. is where you go if you're actually serious about staying ahead of security. And DEF Con's where you go if you can't afford Black Hat and care about security but couldn't spend the extra... Get out of work yeah. for, for B-Sides. Although there, like, there has been an evolution of Black Hat. I, I will mm -hmm. give them this because Black Hat used to be, for me... It was the place that your corporation would pay for you to right. go because mm -hmm. it's a professional conference. And executives, C-suite executives, could learn enough so that they don't sound stupid when they're speaking to their engineers. <laughs> that changed the last two years, but especially this year, there, there were talks at Black Hat that I previously had only seen at B-Sides or DEF CON. The talks at Black Hat this right. year were a lot better than technical, they have been yeah, in previous... In the, the last couple of years, it's been getting pretty nasty, yeah. but the way we describe it to readers is basically, if you want to know what isn't in the manual, then you go to Black Hat. If you want to know how to hack the source code, you go to B-Sides or DEF CON. Right. So DEF CON and B-Sides are very similar. In that sense, what we're used mm. to, with uh, at least from the outside, is that DEF CON is where all the people with zero days go to announce their unique ways to hack cars or hack, you know, ATM machines. That's where you hear. In fact, we always have on Security Now a bunch of stories after DEF CON about, okay, now you got to worry about this. In fact, you know, was Foreshadow announced at DEF CON? There were a whole bunch of new vulnerabilities mm. that mm. came out. So, but is that not the case anymore? No, they still had a lot of vulnerabilities at DEF CON. I mean, okay. you know, I mean, in some ways, DEF CON's always been the more affordable punk rock little sister of, of Black Hat, or little brother, if you prefer, where it was much more democratic in the sense that just about everybody could afford to get right. there. But yeah. now, it's like uh, Burning Man. Like, everybody's there. Is that right? Is it become I, very popular? It, was, it felt that way 20 years ago when it was 2,500 people, and it kind of feels like... It's funny, because a lot of people... Well, how many people is it now? 25,000? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, Rob, Joy, Rob Joyce, the NSA's former Tailored Access Operations guy, gave a, a, a keynote on the second day. And f that was a 5,000-seat auditorium he was talking at. Yeah. It filled up within 30 minutes, and there were at least twice that number of people trying to get in, queuing all the way down yeah. the hall and back again. It's just got too big. I, I remember DEF CON where you could jump from one keynote to the next, right. from one track to the You can't do that anymore. That was a lot. You know, pick that's, a track. That's been like 12 years. I mean, I, gave, yeah. I think it was like eight years ago. I just I realized yeah, I was um, I, it was either I was going to wait for four hours yep. to get mm. into a session or I wasn't going to be able to see a session, which means seeing one session a day. Yep. So It was about DEF CON 22 or so where I just realized, look, these talks are all going to be available afterwards. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend my time in the villages. I'm actually, yeah. DEF CON to me is now hacker summer camp. It's where I get to meet up with people that maybe I only see once a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll, I'll learn the stuff later on. Yeah. Well, one of the big stories, of course, was Voter Village this yes. year. They had oh, yeah. voting machines, some still in service, right? Many still in service from all over the country and encouraged uh, people to hack them. Well, an 11-year-old managed to hack a replica of a government election uh, results website in, in just 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> and, and there, there's a lot of talk about whether or not that was actually hacking an election. And well. the, the, at the, the base is he was able to gain access to a replica of something that would have been, quote-unquote, official information. Mm. The, se right. the that's, Secretary that's of State's good. website right. where yeah. they would announce yeah. the winner of an election. Yeah. So even if it's, you know, oh, we'll fix it, it's disruptive that, the, that exactly. he got in. That's not good. I did see, though, a number of voting machines easily modified, Super. easily hacked. Oh, yeah. I, I, I spent like an hour in there. And uh, one of the, it wasn't a voting machine, but it was the poll worker tablet. So mm. it's the, the, the device that the poll worker would have so that he or she knows how to run what's going on, would direct people to the right machines, et cetera, et cetera. And it was just noob stuff. Uh, yeah. It was using a PCMCIA card for its <laughs> configuration. The file was not signed in any way, shape, or form. So mm -hmm. anyone could pop the thing out, reconfigure it, and change what the poll worker was doing. Well, one of them had a memory and an SD card, which yeah. was you know, physically available to anybody who was... You know, <laughs> just in, pop it out. You know, so pop it out, put in the operating system in, that's fine, we're done. And it's just it, it was bonkers. Silly. It was interesting because one of the things, the, the, the kind of the Association of Secretaries of State, which I'm getting the name wrong, but essentially a group that represents the Secretaries of State we're like, this is not legit because this is not how, you know, the security isn't in place. People wouldn't have access. And the truth is, is, is you know, on one hand, sure, you know, generally speaking, you don't have all these voting machines and, you know, tens of thousands of hackers circling around them uh, during an election. But the flip side is that a lot of this stuff that was being caught was stuff that makes security professionals go like, oh, no, no. 
no, no, exactly. No, no. I mean, it's something as simple as not signing a file. Why would you yeah. not sign a file? Why would you not des design the hardware so it won't work right. without a signed file? Why not? Is it the companies that design election and voting machines are not sophisticated? Or are they not worried? What they is just don't They've already been enough. paid. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't give a monkeys. It's, it's, well, but, it's hard but, with that's a decade. Plenty old. of other industries where secure best practices are, are known and adhered to. Why is it? You would think this would be an industry where it would be important. Because in their mind, they think that the attack surface is so small that it's not worth it. Because they think, oh, these, these machines are brought out, what, once a year? Well, and mm -hmm. we've heard that also, that because our system in the United States is so heterogeneous, that even if you figure out how to hack one machine... Right. There's still many, many other ways. Every every county effectively decides how it's going to vote. Oh, yeah, but if you looked at what the, the stuff they were doing, I mean, basically right. they were taking a whole variety of manufacturers' machines and taking them apart. I mean, and some of the manufacturers kind of tried to preempt the whole thing by putting out press releases. Oh, this is a, a very, very, that very was minor so use case. Sad. I know. Yeah. It was so sad. To it see. was just like yeah. we know you're going to hack us, but you know, <laughs> it's not really that important. But, but we recognize it ahead of the fact, so it doesn't yeah. really count. It's like no. It was pathetic. Yeah. Make I, I like better stuff. It was funny because like Matt Blaze did a follow up on this. He's like, every expert on voting security use precinct counted optical scan balance at risk limiting audits. Internet. I don't know what that is, but here's my idea. I spent 10 minutes on that. I'm sure it's better. <laughs> Experts. Your idea doesn't work. Internet. But it has blockchain. Oh, okay. um, oh my gosh. Blockchain. That's yeah, how so we the, yeah, the minute you hear blockchain, you know the argument. I walked over. away. And Every just... booth at Black Hat that did. And blockchain. No. No. I'm no gone. blockchain. Goodbye. Well, it was great. I mean, Parissa Trebris's, uh, Trebris's uh, keynote at Black Hat when she started over goes, first off, blockchain is not going to save you. And you just Thank heard you. a million vendors yeah. go, oh, damn, we need to redo <laughs> the <laughs> signage. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. In principle, the notion of an encrypted, decentralized ledger system seems like it'd be perfect for voting. It's been used in, uh, somebody came up with a, I forget the name of the system now, but they used it in university elections and it, it enables both privacy and also checking for results. But I was talking to one of the guys there, at, uh, actually it was a woman at, at, at the voting village, and she's like, yeah, those kind of things are great when you're running them out over like a thousand people in a university sector, mm -hmm. but trying to run it out on a yeah. national scale, there's all kinds of bugs. The irony is the old method of paper ballots is still the best. Right. Mm. Yeah. right. And in fact, I'm seeing a lot of technology experts say, just go back to paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. The opt opt I was just, yeah, yeah, the optical it. scanning of paper ballots that leaves a trail. Because like, yeah. you can then go back, recount. Yeah. Uh, I think part of this comes from 2000 when the hanging chads in Florida became a big issue <laughs> and we saw recounts on TV for hours. Fortunately, we don't have anyone trying to influence elections in the United States yeah. in the current cycle. <laughs> it's harder to influence <laughs> paper ballots, isn't it? I mean, Well, that's actually, there was a very interesting point that the, pa the old paper ballots, this was one of the guys, this was at Shmoo, a talk at Shmoocon, they suffered from their own uh, mm -hmm. denial of service attack. Because if you've got a very popular candidate, you'd press down on the thing, it would punch through, but if enough people had punched through before, there was a wad of paper underneath the ballot. And you couldn't vote. And right? you couldn't punch all the way through. And well, that can was... we just get them to clean the tray once in a while? Well, just write across on a piece of paper. <laughs> it's worked yeah. for the UK for five, 500 years. You know, it's... <laughs> the, the other thing is that if you're going to hack paper ballots, if you have electronic counting, that's where you hack it. You don't yeah. hack it at the paper ballot. In right. fact, much more efficient just is to hack the counting machines. So there, the paper trail is important because you need to be able to audit it for, right. in some way or fashion. And there are unfortunately quite a few still uh, electronic voting machines used in the United States in elections that do not have a paper trail at all. There's no, there's not a receipt. It's computerized. That makes it better, Leo. Yeah, it's internet. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah Everything's better with internet. That's why the suggestion that the blockchain will fix it is kind of ridiculous. Because the blockchain right. is great for many things, specifically for auditing but not necessarily for verifying that one into the yeah. audit was, was valid. Then there is the whole issue, and uh, this is something that Facebook and Twitter and other big tech companies are concerned about, of influence being uh, uh, ex used over the Internet uh, during the election. Uh, this week, a dozen of the biggest tech companies in the U.S. met at Twitter's headquarters. This was the second meeting they'd had. Google, Microsoft, Snapchat. Uh, they had gone before to meet with the... Uh, with the FBI and the Foreign Influence Task Force. And at that time, uh, they were very unhappy because the FBI said, you tell us, but we won't tell you. They didn't give them any information about what threats oh, they should be aware of. That makes sense. I yeah, think la, la, la. that this second meeting, it sounds like these guys are saying, well, we're not going to be able to get much help from the feds. So what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? See, the thing is, I was um, actually watching a, 
and this is not a phrase I'd say, um, Kara Swisher gave a very good point about this uh, over the weekend, just saying, look, they aren't hacking Facebook and Twitter. They're no, using they're Facebook using and Twitter yeah. as, as it was meant to be used. Yeah. So whether or not tech companies can get their act together to actually do something about this in a way that isn't going to balk their entire business model, I'm highly sceptical about and I don't think that, that, that they're that motivated to do it. Yeah. <laughs> How can we be held not responsible for the content of our services if we actually are responsible for the content of our services exactly. and service well, of this Even if thing. they wanted to, it's hard for them to fix it if their entire business model is based on it. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, all social media is based on two main principles, the ability to be anonymous and the ability to amplify. That's, that's the whole, it's social. Right. The more people like yeah. it, the more it gets amplified. Well, if that's the core of your business, then you by, by design, you can't fix that problem. <laughs> Because anybody with a sufficient enough network can amplify any message and it can be anonymous. Well, all right. So the only way to fix your service is to stop doing your service. I'm yeah. just laughing because like, you know, really what happened, Facebook, to eliminate Facebook, Facebook just needs to make promotion so expensive right. that no one can use it exactly. without bankrupting their nation. So that'll take <laughs> care of that. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Mark has a program to cure the world of all known diseases in 20 years and that takes money. So just Is that okay. true? Oh, yeah, you know, the Mark and, and Melissa... Oh, no, no, it's, what's his name? The uh, Gates Foundation? Gates Foundation? The... No, no, uh, Mark, it's Mark oh, and... It's Priscilla Chan, Priscilla, his wife. Yeah. Yeah. They, they did a, an announcement about 18 months ago where they said they wanted to Eliminate cure it. or make manageable nice. all known diseases. It worked so well years. for Bill and Melinda that the Priscilla right. and Mark well, I mean, wanted to... Honestly, Bill and Melinda have done, done great think, work. Yeah. We're nearly... Polo, polio you know I, is nearly gone. Know, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just reading a review of uh, Steve Jobs' uh, daughter, Lisa oh, Brennan oh, Jobs, yeah. Yeah. which she says is an, a love story to her father. But if you read it, apparently, I haven't read it yet, but I read the review, is like, this guy was a complete jerk. He, well, he was. And, and, yeah. I mean, but she says, but he that? did it in a loving way. Uh, <laughs> That's, That's called what, Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly. exactly. The, the, the yeah. funniest thing I thought it was at the end is she did, the good news is she inherited uh, from the Jobs Estate exactly in the same proportion as the other kids did. All three mm -hmm. inherited millions of dollars. She didn't get the full estate, and she said, which is too bad because if I had, I would have given it to Bill and Melinda Gates. Right. Yeah, <laughs> for their charity. Not bitter at all. Which no, is, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I love my dad, but I'm going to screw him at the end. Well, I mean, honestly, <laughs> okay. Jobs never gave that much money to charity. No, he was no. not. In fact, he discouraged um, Apple from doing anything charitable yeah. at all. Yeah, and he also, he shafted her pretty badly when she was born by refusing to acknowledge he was yeah, a father. Even, even after a DNA yeah. test, he said, no, I'm not the dad. Yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Everyone, oh, Steve Jobs, he was this great yeah, wonder kind. He was a bass. Well, I know several was, people was. who have been in the room and worked with, with Steve Jobs. Not one of them, like, they've all, like, Yep. He's a visionary. He had focus. He was the ultimate editor. But pretty much every one of them said before or after that, but he was the biggest bastard I've ever been trapped with in my entire life. Yeah. And, I mean, and he's also emblematic of the startup culture that we're mm. now starting to recognize as toxic in the Silicon yeah. Valley. This idea that you have to work 100 plus hours a week, otherwise you're not really dedicated to your idea. Yeah. yeah. That, that, I mean, okay, that, it existed before Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs kind of made it a cult. Yes. That was this whole, you know, are you a pirate? Because a pirate never stops working. Yeah. O okay. Well. And the constant <laughs> paranoia, you know, if yeah. you ever, you never got into a lift with Steve Jobs. Because he could just <laughs> you turn, get he fired could just, before you get out. Yeah, he could just turn to you and say, well, what, what do, do you do, do here? By the way, that's L-I-F-T, not L-Y-F-T. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, just want to make that clear. But you wouldn't want to get into a lift with either him either. Way, either. No. Uber was fine, Uber. Though. Get yes. Oh, God, if you actually got into a lift with him, you'd be kicking him Alex out of the Lindsay, but, I mean, door, Alex but, Lindsay, who did work at Apple for a brief time, tells a story of actually getting in an elevator, that's what we call him here in the States, uh, getting in an oh, elevator yes, with course, Steve Jobs and another guy, and the and Jobs firing the guy... You're fired. Get out of here. The guy leaves. Jobs gets out of the elevator. The guy's standing there like a pool, and there's an HR person. She said, no, no yeah. don't worry yeah. about it. It's okay. Just, just avoid Steve just, for the next couple yeah, of days. He won't. Fine. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> but, I mean, to, to, the thing is, like, the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has done extraordinary things. And they've and globally. successfully. What's yeah. interesting about Zuckerberg is he, you know, instead of waiting till he was done with the company, he mm, looked around right. and went, like, I have more money than I can ever spend for the rest of my life. Perhaps I should start doing something useful with it now. Rather than waiting, you know, and I admire that years. whether or not yeah. anything he's doing is realistic. No, is no, no. I, mean, yeah. I take what you're saying, but at the same time, it was also a very good way to shift a huge bulk of stock out of the exactly. tax system yes. and into something that he could be used. And it's not a charity; it's a private enterprise. Yeah. 
being run in his name. So it's not strictly speaking a non profit. I don't want to discourage um, it. I think it's great. No, 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 seriously. Yeah, this money needs to get The proof back is in. in the pudding. We yeah. want to see what happens. Nothing so Show far. me the money. Oh, in fact, in the only case, really the uh, example we have of, uh, of Zuckerberg's uh, philanthropy is the $100 million he gave to Newark for education, mm -hmm. which yeah, turned that out. That worked well. <laughs> you can't dump that much money on a system that's already really poorly run and just say, well, now it's all better, right? Well, particularly in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. My wife, Easy. No, no. <laughs> okay. My wife is a Jersey girl. I take it that you two are from the land of Bruce Springsteen, but, you know, it's... My, my, wife, my, my, my mom... Uh, it's, it's there are a lot of teachers in my family, a lot of teachers in my family in New Jersey. So mm. there, there are a lot of, and, but there are a lot of endemic issues in education all over the United States. Oh, yeah. Just right. Well, he's time. learning what, it's interesting because Bill Gates always had said, I am not going to give away any money until I can do it right. It's very easy to throw money wrong at yeah. a problem yeah. and just not only waste your money, sometimes make the problem worse. Uh, in fact, it's very spent, hard, I think, to do effective charity. Yeah, I mean, so, Gates spent you know, years trying to get his head around the disease issue before they started going yeah. after polio. And now, but for a couple of countries, Isn't that amazing? hopefully polio is going to be eradicated, yeah. which is... So, some of our organizations work with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation mm -hmm. in overseas. Mm. And one of the things that we are, because we, we work with other organizations because they want to copy what we're doing. And when they talk about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they always say, and they make it so hard it's like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. But, but it it's not that it's hard. It's they're demanding accountability. Yeah. I should uh, also point out that while it is great the billionaires give away their fortune, that the amount of money that private charities contribute right. mm. is a tiny fraction. Yep. Yep. And I'll even include the Catholic Church. Yes. is a tiny fraction of what governments contribute to this. Yeah. And, and so it doesn't replace... You know, can't. Uh, it no. can't replace that the societal safety net. Also, the I mean, government side. can fund long-term research in a yeah. way that companies and private individuals genuinely you really don't usually do. Right. Well, certainly not if they're held to quarterly stock. No, <laughs> uh, well, no. In companies, so I'm curious what you think, because Facebook, uh, <laughs> which has an AI oh, lab, which I didn't know, and maybe I don't Facebook, know if this is the no, best. No, no, no. Facebook, Facebook has three AI labs on like three different continents and a fairly large percentage of of the talent pool available for AI research. Dig it. I um, hope that they mean to do good with it, but somehow... Yes, the more time you spend on, you know, Facebook, like a meth addict... The uh, better the world will the be. The better the world will be. <laughs> That's because what I fear. Mark will have more money to give away to his not foundation. <laughs> so no. NYU, uh, New York University, uh, has provided Facebook with an anonymous, and this is already a little bit of a problem because anonymous data sets often aren't, an anonymous data set of 10,000 MRIs, this medical resonance, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, a trove that will include as many as 3 million images of knees, brains, and livers to help Facebook's AI get smarter. Now, I'm sure Facebook says, oh, our intent is to make uh, MRIs work better and faster and maybe, uh, you know, eliminate radiologists. And uh, but, mm -hmm. but honestly, do you really want to be helping Facebook? But who's face whose AI would you help? Google, Apple, Tesla, well, no Facebook, commercial AI. You're helping all of them. <laughs> all the time. Everyone, every, if I you give have them a, all my if data. If you have an Android phone, if you have an AL-EXA, if you have a Google yeah. HOME, oh, if you drive a Tesla, and all of these things, you're well, helping their AI. I think the NYU AI Medical School could maybe do a better job with its 10,000 MRI records I, and on, give it to Facebook. Honestly, this, this screamed publicity stunt to my right. to my mind because Facebook... <laughs> for NYU or Facebook? Both. Well, <laughs> for both, in fact. Because, I mean, Facebook does not have a good reputation when it comes to AI. They're way behind people like Google. They're even behind IBM, whose Watson is a dog that hasn't yeah, found Watson it. turned out not to be very good in oh, medical. Watson, Watson's painfully bad, and they've been shopping it around all these industries. They've done... They, they've just tested Watson on medical stuff, and it's like, ooh, actually, that's making a significant number of, of mistakes. So, honestly, Facebook is... Do you remember, were you F8 a few years ago when they are like, oh, yes, we're building AI into our messenger system? Yeah. And then they had to admit, well, obviously there's a human being at the other end, but, you know, the AI will be there. <laughs> you're like, right, okay, you know, this is why the software developer's so wife dies. So who do you trust, virgin. then? It seems to me, you know, at first I was saying, oh, Facebook, but then I thought, well, Google, is that better? Uh, Apple, is that better? Is Waymo better? Is, is Tesla better? Any commercial entity is going to be working first on profit and mm. secondarily, I'm making the world a better place. My thought is, is it's one thing to have a company that is, is you know, a company that's going to maximize. Since, you know, since 
most companies are publicly held or, or, or the VCs will eventually decide that they want their return and will force them to go public. I think I'm probably a lot more comfortable with companies that are like, we are actually, we have this, this scientist, this person, this individual, this idea, and feel free to point out certain, you know, blood testing systems in a couple minutes after I finish my sentence. But, um, that that if their focus is actually improving MRI and they're not going to survive as an organization if they don't figure out how to make MRIs work better. That's different. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, but that's also like, that's, you know what I mean? That's that, that as a motive, this is like yet another sideline for Facebook. Yeah. Um, well, they even say at the end of the article, this is from CNN Money, Facebook started talking to NYU about the project last year because its AI team, Facebook's, wanted to work on something with real world benefits, even as it performs basic research. So you can see, words. Like, they're talking to a dean. The dean <laughs> talks to the heads of the department. Yeah. Yeah. The departments talk to the professors. The professors look at each other like, I don't have time for this. Here, just take the data set. Uh, Get yeah. out of our hair. Like, and then one professor... Oh, we'll put out a press release. ...who smells money is yeah. like, I got I got the project. Yeah. I think that's exactly yeah. right. I, and yeah. these, these announcements mean nothing to me unless they come with exactly what they're looking for. What is the measurable? Yeah. So it can't just be, oh, we're going to hand over 10,000 MRIs to Microsoft's analytics. It's got to be, because Microsoft wants to see if there's a commonality in X disease. Right. And also, they, it's got to be peer-reviewed. The research is going to be peer-reviewed, double-blind checked. You know, the, I, I get very worried when, oh, AI will replace doctors in 10 years it's like no ai makes serious mistakes which I, I get very worried when academia starts adopting sort of the pr parlance yeah. of, of silicon right. valley I, I don't want to see that that's, well, with that's a bad way they research. were just like well it's 75 percent accurate and that means great a quarter of the people are going to get misdiagnosed right. and die that's not what i'm calling a really good result i guess i would have to say well how accurate are humans and then if it's this is true <laughs> humans yeah, probably but, aren't better at least with it depends know. it depends on the human yeah yeah I mean, Facebook also has, an, I think, a, a hidden agenda with AI because Facebook, as we were talking about, is challenged very much by the fact that it has a business model based on taking as much information as it can and selling it to the highest bidder, even if it maybe is a bidder from a foreign government trying to influence our elections or whatever. Uh, so that's a problem. So, And they don't have it. There's not enough humans to monitor 2 billion users. There just aren't. No, it's not so they so. have to have... There's they another five billion humans on the planet. Okay, so no, no, but half of the world is devoted to moderating <laughs> the other half. It almost worked in Soviet, you know, in the Soviet <laughs> Union. But they I mean, they once laughing, in the phone system said, it, back in the early days when it was always women doing the switching in the phone system. By by the year 1950, all the women in the world will be employed switching the phone <laughs> system. Thank God they came up with electronic switches. You, you know. run out of people after a while. Absolutely, you run out. And, I, and I'm obviously making light of this, but but it's also amazing to realize, you know, you're talking about, like, people talk about the advertising market online being split up. Like, 90% of the revenue goes to Google and Facebook. Google actually sends some of that back out in AdSense. Uh, Facebook not only doesn't really particularly send the advertising revenue out, they also have, are now making publishers, you know, pay for their carriage for all intents and purposes oh, you for saw the that reach. quote they gave again. Yeah, oh, we talked yeah, about that last yeah. week. Campbell. Oh, yeah. you know, great. Right. But it's, like, you know what I mean? Like, like in time, Entire, entire publishing models, like entire entire online businesses, have basically crashed and burned on Facebook's you know choices over the last couple of years. It's not like they don't have money to invest in a lot of areas. No, to there's figure an out article in, on Motherboard that's interesting. I get, let me finish my first thought, okay. which is one of the reasons Facebook wants to kind of promote this notion that we're working on AI. AI is smart. AI is good. Is because they hope that people will buy the notion that AI is going to solve this moderation problem. You and I know it's not. Dave. Dave. It's Dave. not. It's not anywhere close to it. No. Uh, and every time people... Apparently, Mark Zuckerberg has been having meetings now. So this was a great article in Motherboard. The impossible job inside Facebook's struggle to moderate 2 billion people, billions of posts a week, in more than 100 languages. Let's not forget right. that. Uh, so what Mark Zuckerberg is doing... Der Zuckerberg is doing... <laughs> Zuckerberg is uh, having dinner parties <laughs> with, with leading social media academics, a series of off-the-record dinners at his house in Palo Alto, centering around the most important problem plaguing the company, content moderation. It was a very smart PR move for, for Facebook to actually leak that stuff out. <laughs> um, but I'm sorry, it's just like, well, Mark Zuckerberg has dinner. He's having dinner. He's yeah, talking oh, about it on. at dinner. But can you imagine a dinner party with Mark Zuckerberg? You saw the photos from when he went around America like with and a robot. dinner with ordinary people. And it's like, yeah. hi, I'm trying to make it look like I'm enjoying this delicious <laughs> mac and cheese, whereas I just want to get No, home. no. That was the funny thing is that even though he was having dinner with ordinary people, 
his people would come a day early saying, we're going to cater this if you don't mind. Yeah. We don't want mac and cheese. We'll handle this from here. Yeah. You remember when we went to a Montgomery, Alabama uh, uh, for a, a, a tech TV event? I, th I think you were there, Patrick. And we had breakfast at a very lovely home, a mansion in that was Montgomery. Not Wasn't you? No. And, uh, and the hostess served cheese grits Ugh. to everybody, <laughs> which I'm sure is a delicious southern treat. But we were kind of it blocked is. up for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm I didn't something have, to build up to. I didn't yeah. exactly. I didn't have the cheese grits uh, stamina. What the, that I hadn't really built up a, a, see, a, a defense against cheese grits. As, as a Brit, I, I hesitate to criticize <laughs> another person's cuisine, but my goodness, grits are just foul. you eat bangers and mash. Don't and yeah. even get on this. It's delicious, but cheese grits. There was. Oh, you must have like, been up in arms. There was an it's article. It's like grits, but with cheese. What's wrong with that? It's cheese a, and oatmeal. No one has yet grits explained to me great. what exactly grits are. It, it's it's, it's a corn kernel. It looks like yeah, but it's, it's polenta. Corn. It's 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 redneck. Polenta. It's white corn. <laughs> right? It's like degerminated corn. It's a corn special corn. kind. <laughs> and then it it does it. There's a chemical thing that happens with the cheese and the starch in the corn. They bond together in an unholy alliance. It's basically a long chain polymer <laughs> in your gut. It looks yes. like greasy foam. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Did you read? You must have been so upset. There there was a lot of uh, uh, upset about it okay. about the New York Times. Which apparently discovered that there's good food in London now, beyond uh, porridge and boiled mutton. I'm sorry, London has more Michelin-starred restaurants than Paris. Like what? They just tuned into like Marco Pierre White getting the three-star <laughs> restaurant like 27 years ago. Yeah. I mean, wake up! It, this this article was so offensive apparently to people in England uh, from the New York Times. Robert Draper running writing it. I guess he hadn't been to London. He says. Uh, in a long time. He probably also doesn't like curry and probably doesn't like fish and chips. Well, yeah. he's saying now how good the food is, but honestly, do you think even 10 years ago, people were eating porridge and boiled mutton in London? Uh, not unless uh, they wanted to. Well, I don't no, I mean, think so. Porridge actually for breakfast is a really good breakfast. Yeah. Uh -oh. um, but you wouldn't go out to a restaurant and no, eat no, it. No, no, no. And boiled mutton, yeah, it's not the best way to do mutton. Ideally, you should braise it and do it <laughs> a stew with bacon. But um, <laughs> British... I think that's okay, number next. five on the on, menu. On yeah, but I mean, I'm sorry. This Okay, admittedly, we had a bad end of the 20th century, what with rationing going on until 1957, yes. and, and we didn't really Let's recover. Let's not forget, there was a war. Yeah, you know, and um, but British food is now, we can hold our head up anywhere, anywhere else. And plus, as you say, we've got the, the, the curry factor and the, the fact that we've Fat, accepted best Indian food a, whole in bunch London, of, right? a whole bunch of cuisines because... Let's face it, British food, traditional British food, you're not going to go out after a, you know, a night on the a night in the town on a Friday and go to the scone shop and try, you know, get a jammy scone. You want a curry, you want a kebab, you want really well, good, greasy as food. As long as we're talking about England, there's one other thing I meant to be talking to you about. <laughs> Dental hygiene. Oh, for goodness sake, not this again. Look, my teeth are perfectly... Although my dentist, wow. I went, I went for wow. tooth, I went for teeth cleaning about five months ago with a new dentist. He went, and there. she went, ah, you have British teeth, and I thought, yeah, I've just been insulted there. <laughs> British teeth, you don't want British teeth. You want a Quip toothbrush. In fact, I'll be glad to get you one. You know, we just got the. We're going to go on a trip. This is my last trip for a few weeks. We've got some great people filling in. Don't worry. Uh, but I, we were going to bring our uh, our regular toothbrushes, and I, and I had a brilliant idea. I ordered two. Quips for travel. This is the best electric toothbrush for travel, among other things, because it doesn't use a charger. It's battery powered, a single AAA battery, so it's very compact. I love it. It's got this stick, sticky um, adhesive on one side, so you put it right on the mirror so you never forget to brush in. Mm. And, <laughs> and I feel I'm sorry, I'm being and terribly slow. This is the first yeah. subscription electric toothbrush accepted by the American Dental Association. Thousands of five-star, verified five-star reviews. The the thing about this is, this is not, this is a system. See, in America, we don't just mm -hmm. buy toothbrushes. We get a system. You mean? First of all, it's an electric toothbrush. And we all know electric toothbrush is better. My dentist, I, the other day, I had my teeth cleaned, and she said, you use an electric toothbrush, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. She said, very good job. I should have said, I use the Quip. The Quip is awesome. It makes brushing your teeth more simple and more enjoyable and more effective with their sonic, their sensitive sonic vibrations, gentle enough on your sensitive gums. You don't want to brush too hard. You don't want to wear away your teeth enamel. 
Uh, it has a two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds, so you know when to switch, si switch sides. 90% of us don't brush for a full two minutes or don't clean evenly. But here's what I love about the Quip. It's affordable. As little as $25. This is the best electric toothbrush you can get. It's awesome. We got his and her. We're gonna, they're so inexpensive, we're basically taking them on the trip and we're just going to leave them on the boat because we kind of come home to our regular toothbrush. What a great idea. Brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule, so you don't use the head too long. Every three months, you get a new brush. Just $5. That shipping is included. You don't want to use bristles that are old, worn out, and ineffective. Uh, they come. I love the packaging, too. It comes with a nice little booklet that teaches you how to brush. So if you have any friends who have questions, <laughs> kids love it, too. In fact, we have uh, extra quips for uh, Michael's friends when they come for sleepover. Chris, so for some reason, these teenage boys never bring toothbrushes. I don't know what it is. Quip is awesome. Here's how you get yours. Go to getquip.com slash twit, and you'll get your first refill pack free when you purchase any Quip electric toothbrush. Getquip.com slash twit. Quip starts at just $25. I love our Quip. And you know what? You have excellent teeth, so I know you... Are taking good care. Uh, well, you, you have re English reasonable teeth. care. I have English teeth. I didn't wear a. <laughs> unlike most Americans, I didn't wear a brace when I was a kid. Yeah, no, I didn't. Ha I didn't wear braces either. And now every kid wears braces for yeah. some reason. It's actually this is great for a child with braces. It's much easier to brush with a quip. Getquip.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support. I'm sorry to use you as the butt of our... No, 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 that's fine. I, 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 I don't resent mean. it at all. You're a rebellious colonial. <laughs> One day <laughs> when the Queen comes back and this country is put under mean. proper governance, then we'll be... Um, then the, the, the pitchforks will come out. But <laughs> All right. What else can I be up in arms about? I think I'm done with Facebook. I should leave... Should I leave Facebook? Leave Facebook Are we moving alone. on to the next outrage? Yeah, there's always one. Did you yeah. see this? This actually is very upsetting to me. There was uh, there were a series of robberies in southern Maine, and the uh, the cops had no idea. So what they did, they went to a judge who signed a search warrant, which they sent to Google, and they said, would you please send us the name, address, and location of anyone who was in the vicinity of at least two of the nine robbery locations within 30 minutes of the crime. Just everybody. This is not based on the fact that they knew the guy had an Android phone. Right. By the way, no. it's Android or iOS, because if you use this Google Apps. This is a blatant data grab. Yeah. Unbelievable. And they were trying to set up, you know, basically precedent in law so they could do this again. The judge approved it. I know. Google said, I don't think so. The judge approved it again. Google said, I don't think so. They kept resisting, and eventually... Look at this. Authorities found the guy, arrested him, not based on his location data from his phone. It actually was based on a, a footprint. He and he he had run out of his shoes. Oh, you mean like good good old fashioned <laughs> old police fashioned work? police? Yeah. Oh, wow. But you see the thing I'm afraid of. And look, I want to catch crooks as next as as much as the next guy. What you don't want is law enforcement saying, "Oh, let's get a search warrant for everybody who was right. in the area. Let's get everybody's name, address, phone number." And and let's just sift through that, see what we find. That's that's what they call a fishing expedition. And I yeah. thought it was un I thought it was unconstitutional. Maybe not. It should be. I mean, this was, as you say, a blatant fishing attempt. Yeah. They were trying to. I mean, let's face it. The feds have have sort of form on this sort of stuff. They tried it with the San Bernardino case with Apple trying to backdoor encryption. They're trying this now with large scale data scoops. They're going to keep on trying until they get what they want which is access to all this information no matter what. Now, but here's okay. Here's the thing. I, I, I agree with both of you. I agree that this is an egregious violation of privacy. However, the government could have got, done this a different way. They could have just bought the information. This is the information that's for sale. There are at least three startups that are partly funded by the CIA. This is part of their, their no, tech the incubator. Intel right. This is the about, information yeah. that they buy so that they can provide real-time data graphics on what people are doing because they can say oh look there's a there's a group forming so this is information that's already saleable the the reason why this made the news is because this kind of didn't pass the smell test it mm. wasn't being done for data analytics it wasn't being done to sell something it right. was being done because law enforcement said we need we need oh. an easier way to do our so job so what you're saying is i could have gone to facebook and said could you i'd like to buy an ad yeah. for everybody who was in the, within mm. a yeah, mile exactly. of the convenience store on these days Did you hear us and you would have had it. Yeah. <laughs> and see that doesn't spark outrage people are like oh, yeah that's what they do yeah. but the government did it oh well <laughs> that's a, oh you can't do that Debug in our chat room said, crime is a lot lower in a police state 
but that doesn't mean I want to live there. Precisely. That's a very good point. And this yeah. is the problem is that uh, I, I think... So we've got to the point now where, and this is something Moxie Marlin Spike said at, at RSA, the crypto panel at RSA a couple of years ago, you have to have the ability to break the law. Because when you think about it, Civil rights, if you know, if the, if the, okay, if going back further, if the British had had the kind of data monitoring techniques in 1776 that are available, the Tea now, Party wouldn't have happened. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jefferson and his elk could have been up a rope with a hemp necktie. Yeah. You know, the civil rights movement wouldn't have happened. If, You're talking uh, about civil if, if, disobedience. Uh, yeah, you've got to have the ability to break the law, and you know, whether it's civil rights, whether it's in the last decade, it's gay rights, it's going to be privacy rights in the next decade. There's got to be a certain That's amount of That's how laws change, isn't it? Yeah, laws change. Because if everyone just obeyed the law, then we'd ossify. No one would do anything. And it, it's, it's got to be You could see, bought. though, that law enforcement looks at a smartphone and just thinks, there, everything I'd ever want to yeah. know is in there. I, it's, I mean, forget pre-crime. I, I don't, this isn't Minority Report. I could just, I know where everybody is at all times. I know who they texted. I know it, it's all in there. And it must drive them crazy that there's any restrictions at all on getting into this. But they, I mean, they, they, I'm sorry, police forces have been doing this stuff for 152 without years. Without the smartphone. Without the smartphone. I don't see why we should give well, up our privacy. That's the thing. The FBI has been complaining, and you hear this all the time about, well, you've got users who are going dark. It's like, no, no, no. It's not that they're going dark. It's that you now expect information that you never had access that's to exactly. before. Exactly. I, yeah. I've said this before, but I haven't said it to you. Phil Zimmerman was on the creator of PGP. Mm. It's exactly what he said. Yeah. The Zimmerman's law says as technology advances, more and more opportunities for surveillance will exist. He says law enforcement has a big screen, HDR, yeah. 4K view of everything that's going on. And there's these little black pixels, just a few mm. dark pixels. And it drives them crazy. It's not going dark. It's just that it's not perfect. And, you know, I don't want to live in a country where law enforcement has a perfect view of everything that's going no. on. I think that that's, that sounds awful. It's, it's not an evolutionary I don't, state. I don't want crime, and I want law enforcement to have mm -hmm. tools. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to live in a state where the state knows everything you're doing. <laughs> that's 1984. Yeah, and we've, we're coming close to this, I see, with the, in Australia, the Australian look at this. thing. So this is an existing law in Australia. They just the love it. They call it the Assistance and Access Bill. It sounds so <laughs> cute and friendly <laughs> and cuddly. The, you know? in the, in the Crimes Act, under Australia's existing a Crimes Act, uh, this Assistance and Access Bill strengthens the penalties. There, there are, it's already illegal for you not to unlock your phone for the police in Australia, apparently, mm. under the Crimes Act. But now... Judges could jail, if this bill passes, a person for up to two years just for not unlocking the phone. And, and the bill extends, proposed bill extends that for up to 10 years. Oh, I get, I'm sorry. It's already two years. They want to extend it to 10 years. 10 years in jail, not because you committed a crime, but because you won't unlock your phone. No, no, no. They made it illegal to not unlock your phone. Well, that's now, been that's more, been the case for a while. Sure, because and what happens is I'm refusing to unlock my phone. I get yanked into whatever they call the police stations in Australia. There's a discussion which I'm sure is highly intellectual and Very thoughtful between the arresting officer and myself. Been to Australia, in right? the meantime, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've played a lot of rugby with Australians. Oh, okay, um, it left impressions. The uh, but at that point, what happens is that one of my associates, should I be someone who actually did something nefarious? has erased my phone remotely possibly or they want they want to make this so threatening that people that aren't afraid of two years i mean it's you know it's it's this is like a classic like we're going to make life more complicated for everyone look at this uh, well, also they introduced with this bill there's a five-year prison sentence if you go whistleblower and report on an official <sighs> government investigation on someone so, I mean, okay, okay, reality winners just got five years, but I mean, the Australian... That, by the way, let's talk about that, because that seems right. to me criminal. What did reality winner, winner do? She told the world that the Russians were hacking us. Yeah, and for that, she gets over five years in prison. Which is, I think, the strongest penalty... Well, you could argue Chelsea Manning, but... Um, it's longest definitely the strongest sentence. penalty in the Russian hacking affair. Oh, certainly in the Russian so hacking. So the, the yeah. one who's gotten the, the biggest penalty so far is the one who told us, no, we what know we what's happening. we actually needed to know, yeah. yeah. And it's unfortunate that she got shafted by the journalists that she leaked to because they, that, yeah. uh, they, didn't, they didn't handle it particularly well. But it's just shameful. I mean, the, the idea, basically, this that she can get five years in prison for doing something, for telling us something we should have known. Is that's just, why you want whistleblowers. Yeah, that's why that's you need the point of whistleblowers. Now, I understand you need to, you know, 
people who are given classified access to military information uh, need to hold to a higher standard. But I even think in the military code, you're not asked to break a, a lo break the law because your commanding officer told you to do so. You're asked to say no and report it. And well, I think that that's... That works there in is... the military, but she's a contractor. Right. It's the, same, it's the Snowden problem. Everyone's like, well, why didn't... He was, he was an NSA employee. Why didn't he whistleblow? Because he was a contractor. He had no legal protections at all. Right. And we've seen how these people react against whistleblowers. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's one of the things that Obama... I, I'm was... not convinced they would have had protection either. Even no, had absolutely been... not. Yeah. No. But it's also, I mean, there was something it, it really accelerated under Obama's tenure as president was yeah. just bringing yes. down the, uh, the stuff hammer yeah. on whistleblowers. Being, you, yeah. Using the Espionage Act, which is, yeah. you know, it's the, the cudgeled club of legal, you know, there's no rapier involved in that. It, it's, it's, as you say, this starts under Obama and it's only getting worse. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is from a so Naked Security blog on, on Sophos.com. The flowchart in Australia for what they call the industry assistance process. So law enforcement first is to ask for assistance from the telecommunications industry. Okay. If, uh, in, does the agency require assistance assist accessing communications content or data? Yes, then get a warrant. No? Well, maybe think what, figure out if a warrant's required. Then they consult the provider. Does the provider want to provide voluntary assistance? Yes? Oh, good. No problem. No? Uh-oh. Is the provider currently capable? In other words, is it encrypted? We can't do anything. If so, agency and provider negotiate terms, conditions, and any costs. Agency gives provider a technical assistance notice. Yeah, you have to help. If they can't because it's encrypted, oh, well, that's fine. Attorney General issues a proposed technical capability notice to the provider for consultation. In other words, they order them to break the crypto. Yeah. Well, the, in a way, this is the problem. We've, we've, when it comes to encryption, we've won the battle and we've lost the war. And that I think now the we FBI... have encryption. Well, no, I think now that the governments have got to the idea that they've accepted that it's mathematically impossible to backdoor encryption in a way that only you can access. They've accepted that argument now. What they've instead have decided... Have they really? I think they have. Oh, hallelujah. And I think what they've instead decided is, right, we would actually need to break encryption. We just need to break the device. Yeah. So with the Australian law, if you want to sell a device or run a communication server in Australia and you get served with one of these notices, you have to give root access to that device to the government. So you forget about breaking encryption. You just give them the root to the root to their phone or their computer yeah. instead, and that gets around all those mathematical problems of dealing with encryption, and just basically everyone gets the shaft. It's it's a difference between data at rest and data in transit. For the longest time, they thought that they should be able to get at data in transit because mm. that's the way that they used to do it. They would right. tap someone, and they could hear things happening in real time. They've I think they've understood maybe if they they don't actually think that uh, a backdoor encryption won't work. Mm -hmm. They at least know now that politically it's it's untenable. But However, aren't they asking Facebook Messenger to give, uh, to to wiretap Facebook? Oh, they'll still carry on yeah, doing what it. They, well, yeah, what they really want is they want the data at rest because they realize mm -hmm. the difference between data at rest and the data in transit is so minuscule. Why even I have, try to do that? I also have another theory that they have learned over experience that even if they can't get the data as it's coming, they can get it after egress from the yep. encrypted. Mm. So... They don't have to it get has to be Apple. decrypted somewhere. Yeah, they don't have to get Apple to cooperate. They just get it on its way. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, we can we can capture it. In fact, that's that's what was going on. The NSA was getting all of this data on the on the uh, the cross country uh, backbones, mm. not from the, they didn't have to ask Google for it. They just get it as it comes out of Google, no problem. And that's why you've got devices like this. Like yeah. one of the things I've been playing around with this. Uh, this that's is, made in China, dude. You don't have any is, security on your one. This is made in China. However, it's got a feature. Sorry, that I, I which of your see phones more. was not made in China? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Could you hold that up for me, Mr. Laporte? <laughs> no, but this has graded, uh, graded, gradiated, gradiated security. So. Right. Um, I turned off the, uh, the face recognition to get in the phone. Certain apps require the fingerprint. Certain apps require the pin. But then there's also there's a hidden data partition. So inside the encrypted partition, there's an encrypted partition that you cannot access. That's thanks to the Qualcomm 845. Thank you. <laughs> it uses the real-time encryption engine. No, but, you know, it's just... I should, I mean, now that I said that, Qualcomm is a sponsor, yeah. and that's part of their ad. Okay, and they didn't pay for an ad on this show. They just got a free one. They just one. got one. No, but uh, it's, it's this whole idea. It's, actually, it's reaching Apple, out to people Apple who Apple invented want, this, which is yeah, the secure enclave, The secure right? enclave. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's the same thing as a secure enclave, but it's yeah. one step beyond that, which is... 
they won't even know it's there. It looks like you've given oh, them access to your device. Plausible deniability. Yeah, but the yeah. app is is all it's in the memory, but no one knows it's there. Also, Leicester in America, we get a bit, a bit too snug about this. You can all, the police can already if you just got a fingerprint lock lock on your yeah. phone, the police can already force you to put your fingerprint on that and unlock your phone. It's numerical passwords they can't get around in theory in theory but then there's all this like, so i'm traveling out the of the country of and into the country i'm going to face uh, <laughs> customs and border patrol both ways uh what should i do with my electronics devices you're going to be traveling in and out of well, I mean, and that's how why i said it up. do you feel yeah because i i have friends who are security professionals that wipe everything yeah travel basically you know either with linux or nothing on the laptop which yeah. really pisses off uh, <laughs> no, you can border. get in trouble for that yeah you can because they literally because they can't really boot anything because it goes up to bios yeah. so the next evolution was to put a stripped down operating system install they show them the operating system but all their files are stored that's on that a server. plausible deniability right. and then when they used to do that yeah you, when they looks like normal files there yeah but it literally like they, what they do is they basically so travel with suspicious. a blank laptop yeah mm. you know or maybe yeah they, they yeah, you, you open up an episode of candy crush saga <laughs> go through oh, customs sorry. and then download everything they need yeah. from a server, you know, yeah. in, in Switzerland or wherever. So they I keep on their, their uh, data on all of my uh, laptops, I always have a, a it's <coughs> like a BIOS password. I have a hard drive, but you can't get into the hard drive. Hard drive is encrypted. You can't right. get into it in, in, unless you enter a password before boot. You can't boot it mm. without that. Right? Is, are they going to ding me for that? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, Actually, and they, I, I and have a I have a travel profile. So <coughs> when I travel, all my devices are set to the travel profile. There are things in the OneDrive. There are things in the Dropbox. It looks like it's been used, mm. but it's not my real profile. I have yeah. to say, because I'm an old white man, I've never been asked for this. You know, never. Well, that been. makes one of us. <laughs> every time I come back into I think the I'm country, okay. do you get it every time? Every single well, time. Priests are notorious for I know right? sneaking around. No, it's because you're Filipino, probably. I'm Filipino. Yeah. Um, well, that's sad. So you're yeah. saying, if I were Father Robert and I had a password protected hard drive, as that would be a problem. They would confiscate yes. the device. Yeah. They would take if, it? If you do yes. not give them the password, they can take your hardware, yeah. which is why the security professionals are traveling with basically blank computers, and then mm. they get the information they need off yeah. of not storage really blank. in the cloud. They put some innocuous stuff Whatever, on it, so it looks know. like... Yeah, you know yeah, they're doing some. Once pictures. it's been taken by oh. them, you can't really use that device with any degree of confidence. Yeah, if it right. goes out of your sight, you just assume. Yeah, it's I mean you can put compromise. malware into the battery firmware that's going to be absolutely undetectable anyway. So love that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a great hack, but you know this is theoretical though, right? This is no, a, no, no. It, it, for some people, it depends on who you are and what you're doing, right? Mm. You know, I mean, this a lot of stuff was theoretical, but like it's like OPM gets you know hammered for the entire contents of every. Like my wife got a notice as a contractor for a subcontractor got a notice to basically say, yeah, that whole thing where you gave us all this information, like it went to China. Sorry, <gasps> um, yeah, like yeah. you know, I mean, like literally fingerprints, even fingerprints, everything that was in that database got exported because of the security. There's, there's. You know, if you are, I would almost be, you know, there are people who work certainly in government. There are people who work for agencies that are worried about, I mean, I can't imagine what, what known engineers for Apple do if they have to leave the country. Certainly they have oh, nothing yeah. on their computers. You know what I mean? Like this, the the level, you know, you or me, like there's nothing we have on our laptops that we should be hiding at this point, unless you have some sort of nefarious activity I don't know about. Well, but. it depends what they <laughs> think. How about a Bitcoin wallet? Would that be considered nefarious? I don't know. It depends Only on if it's from McAfee and the BitFi. Well, you also, know. I mean, I'm sorry. I've, they got, think I've you... got contacts on my phone that I don't want the government to see. These people. Well, you're like... a journalist for very good reasons. Yeah. You don't want government access to. Well, your... you've got a responsibility to your contacts. Yeah, and there's yeah. sources. Yeah. And you, by the way, oh, I always thought you had a legal right to that. I guess. <laughs> No, no. Everything, but it's also, it's everything gets interesting at the edges. So as soon as you go from, you know, a lot of things that you are perfectly well protected on in the center of the company, or the company, country, company, country, mm. uh, as soon as you leave the country, I mean, one of the worst roustings I've ever gotten, not that I've traveled that much internationally, but one of the worst roustings I have ever gotten, um, worse actually than when I got pulled out of line and shaken down in East Germany when I was in high school, was just going into Canada, Canada to meet up no, with you. I knew no, you were yes. Canada. Canada. The <laughs> most aggressive searches I've ever had were, in, were coming from I, Canada like, back to the States. I hearing these stories about I thought Canadians were supposed to be polite. <laughs> I don't just know. Like, I, no. And like, and like I'm, I'm in full, like I'm, I'm anywhere yeah. near uh, like any kind of border crossing. I'm in full military courtesy mode. I am yes oh, sir, yeah. no ma'am. I yeah. am super chill. Like whatever the, like the most toned down clothing I have is on me. I'm wearing shoes. My toes are covered. I'm looking like all kinds of respectable. And I just remember this guy kept coming at me. 
um, going into. I remember that. I used to go through that every you know, month. And it, to the <laughs> no. point where I was actually starting to. I ended to, up getting a letter. Well, I, I had back to back yeah. trips. I came back from Syria and I was like, oh, I'm going to get hassled. I went straight through. I'm like, wow. The next week I was in Canada, I came through. They looked through every piece of equipment. They had me turn on the camera, look through the files on the. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get the scrutiny coming back from a known supporter of terrorism that I did coming back from the, the land of. Sir, I have to ask, do you wear the collar when you're going through? Not anymore. Okay. Because the collar was 100% guaranteed to, to get stopped. Really? Yeah. One, yeah. Oh, because I'd, if I were a bad guy, I'd wear I'd a collar. Do so I don't uh, do it anymore. You should have yeah. worn a burqa. Because it looks like it's a disguise. It does. It does. They, they think, oh, yeah, that guy. He's a disguise. That's <laughs> oh, a disguise. That's just insane. Mm -hmm. We live in interesting times, buddies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've got to say the land of the free trademark is looking increasingly less so, but, you know. It's, uh, it's a pendulum. Talk about, it swings. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it seems like it's, it's, been, it's been swinging this way for a while. I'm a little nervous. A little nervous. It even, it, yeah, I remember the Reagan years. It swung back. It swung back. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. See, I, I think know, the some, ship of states kind of... It always feels yeah. like it's not going to swing back, but right. it, it does. Yeah, we'll we'll one can hope. Yeah. The problem is, and I, in my opinion, each time it swings to the more repressive, it it opens avenues that didn't exist before. So mm. it gets easier yes. and easier for it to go that way. And, and I have to say, even President Obama did exactly Absolutely. that. Yes, he did. Uh, by making it easier and easier to prosecute whistleblowers and things. And that means the next time it swings, it swings a little farther. Mm -hmm. Yeah, farther. exactly. That was one of the most depressing things about, uh, from a data perspective about the Obama right. presidency, was that, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it got worse and worse and worse. And then, you know, there wasn't, you'd think there'd be some kind of, of balance involved considering considering who was involved. But no, I mean, it just, it swung and it swung and they were just like, give us this stuff, give us this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and that particular pendulum has not swung. Back. No, it, because, I mean, when you, you think when yeah. Snowden came out with his, with his things, that would have caused, you know, oh, we must, you know, revive, as we did with Watergate, we must revive the laws and we must you know, build the rule of the law. And so, no, they just legalized it. You know, it's just like, oh, we were grabbing all that data, technically illegal, I suppose. Oh, just pass this law. Yeah, okay, it's now all legal. Never mind. And we did, didn't get any better. Let's take a little break. Father Robert Balasser is here on his way to the Vatican, where he is on assignment. On assignment. But it's great to have you one last time in our studio, Jesuit.org, at Padre SJ. You will tweet, right? I, oh, I will tweet. I, I will be doing content. I just kind of have to figure out my actual job. Right. Before I start doing the fun stuff. Yeah. Also, there's pastors to be had, so, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> there's past to be had. That's, uh, that is, uh, of course, from the register.co.uk, my good friend Ian Thompson. Always welcome in our studios, that's for sure. In fact, all of you are, I think, close friends. It's really wonderful to have you uh, here, Ian. News oh, editor fun. at the Register. Best uh, Register headline ever. Oh, which one was that? Uh, I don't I like think I can say it. Polite back. company. Uh, you can't. You can't. <laughs> I've got to like, which one, how tasteless. We'll, we'll lose our rating. <laughs> uh, just, I encourage you, if you enjoy excellent headline writing, the register.com, you can excellent writing in, in general, yeah. but the headlines sometimes are. Sometimes salacious, sometimes. Um, feisty. Feisty is a good word for it. Yeah, we have fun with them. I mean, every journalist will try and get their headline up, up on the site, but it's the editors who will decide. And, you know, when you actually get one that you put forward in there, it's just like, yes. Should um, I, uh, should I, I wonder if I should mention it. Is, um, it. is it the leaking one? No, as porn sites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take yeah, care of the advertiser first? <laughs> yeah. Contemplate the future I'll of the network. I'll just show you guys. And then you and can everybody come else can that. figure it out. <laughs> have, a, have the moment <laughs> that. Uh, just, this is uh, Kieran McCarthy. Obviously, has a sense of humor. Oh well, Kieran's been working working for the site on and off for twenty <laughs> years. Um, but yeah, that was that. this is as bad as I've ever seen it. Oh, I don't know. Did you not see the one when when the Twitter CEO swapped round and it was Jacks off to? Oh you know, no, 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 no. It's an art. It's an art form. Also here from Tex Tech Thing. I almost said Tech Techzilla. Techthing dot com. <laughs> Patrick Norton. Hey. And uh, it was always uh, also very welcome in studio. One of the original twits back to the very first episode. So that's pretty something. So many years ago. Yeah, 14 years ago now. <whistles> Almost 14. Yeah. Incredible. Blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. Slightly younger than my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And even then, I, uh, I posted pictures of your marriage illegally on the internet. <laughs> 
Yeah, Sarah was a little ticked about that. Was she? I thought so. I never got her to say so, but I realized I probably shouldn't have done that. It was the particular selection of. It was she the didn't like the pictures I put. It was. Up. It was. It was not so much the selection of pictures, <clears> but <throat> that there were like twenty six of them, and they all ended up on a guy's site in Oklahoma what? to promote. He he what? used it as an anchor to gain traction in Google rankings no. for his oh, eBay listing. Oh, it's okay. Great. Eventually, uh, eventually, I said something very um, libelous. No. But not particularly. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Yeah, I suggested that it, that I may be traveling to that part of Oklahoma mm. and visiting the address on the. On the <laughs> and I'm uh, bringing my sledgehammer. Bringing my wife, much more scary <laughs> Even than my sledgehammer. Scarier, yeah. <laughs> As my wife is fond of saying, you know, she taught karate for several years and has impulse control issues and is quick to get angry. Yikes. She's like, I don't understand now why I people feel... are worried about you. I'm the one with the impulse control issues and the anger management problem. <laughs> Please <laughs> apologize to Sarah for me. No, no, 14 years later. No, no, no you you, you you're, you're fine. No one will know who the shadowy <laughs> figure with a chainsaw was. <laughs> you know? Our show today brought to you by I uh, by my dinner. I love it when we've got Blue Apron waiting at home because I know I've got everything I need to make an amazing gourmet meal in half an hour to 45 minutes. Blue Apron is awesome. Number one fresh ingredient recipe delivery service in the country. Skip meal planning, get straight to cooking with Blue Apron. All you got to do, once a week, I go to the Blue Apron site, I pick our menu for the week. Blue Apron delivers perfect, fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and the step-by-step -step recipes. They, they show up on my doorstep, and, and I am ready to cook. And I, we usually get three meals a week. It's awesome. You can choose two, three, or four recipes based on what best fits your, fits your schedule. Of course, you can put it on hold at any time, and we will for our vacation. You can count on non-GMO ingredients, meat with no added hormones, really delicious stuff. And I am still, this is actually one I cooked uh, this week. Uh, I'm still loving the summertime. We're coming kind of the end, right? Experience the joy of summer mouth-watering grilling options. I do the grilling stuff always. Seared chicken with a tangy barbecue sauce. Uh, that was so good. Juicy cheeseburgers with spicy slaw. The side dishes often for me are the real inspiration. There's things that I will cook again and again. The Blue Apron menu changes every week. It's always based on what's in season, right? Be sure to check out the menu for their chef-designed recipes and exciting partnerships. Are you ready for this? Bob's Burger. Bob's Burger <laughs> and, and MasterChef. The Gouda Wife Burger from Bob's Burger. Yes! The Gouda yes. Wife, Burger. Wife Burger. Cheeseburgers <coughs> with cucumber radish salsa. <coughs> if you're Bob's Burger fans, this is like it's heaven. Epic. It's epic. It's epic. Uh, for grilling, Tuscan pork chops with farro. And marinated mozzarella. That's a perfect example. I'd never had farro before until I got Blue Apron. Now I cook it all the time. Vaduvan shrimp and sweet chili sauce with aromatic rice and almonds. Great for date night. Great to turn your family on to cooking. If you've got kids, families with Blue Apron cook together more often. The kids can't help it. They smell something amazing. They come in and say, what's for dinner? And then they go, and I say, oh, this is great. You can help. Just go over there, start stirring the shrimp or whatever. And it really gets them into cooking. They have vegetarian uh, choices as well. Sweet and spicy soba noodles with cabbage, cucumbers, and fried eggs. Vegetarians will love that. They're no longer, you know, kind of getting the side dishes. They're getting something delicious just for them. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free. Blueapron.com slash twit. We love our Blue Apron every week. And I just, it's so much fun to cook for somebody you love. To cook a delicious meal for your family and have them enjoy it. And 15 minutes later, they left, and you have to wash the dishes. But those oh, 15 sorry, minutes the, the, the are great. The cook never washes the dishes. <laughs> no, I know. It's a know. rule. But, uh, but <clears throat> it is a little sad, because when you make something that delicious, they eat it really fast. <laughs> it's like, okay, thanks, bye. Yeah. <laughs> It's got to be one of the most depressing jobs, really, chef. You slave over oh, something. So I don't and mind. There's a yeah, they do. No, no, they, oh, even worse. You slave over someone and says, do you have any ketchup? No, oh. that's not allowed in my house. <laughs> Blueapron.com slash twit. Your first three meals are free. Blue Apron's a better way to cook. Uh, I, this is a story that's been breaking all afternoon. I don't have the details on it, but our hearts and thoughts and prayer, not that. <laughs> Although that's interesting, too. Uh, go out to... Uh, uh, our viewers and listeners in Jacksonville, Florida, another oh, mass yeah, shooting, this time at a Madden NFL a uh, tournament in Jacksonville. I saw the news coming up this morning. And and we don't have the details, so I don't want to talk too much about the 11, details. I think. Some killed. Uh, the yeah. sad thing, and I hope this isn't true, but 
I saw at least some evidence that it was somebody who lost one yeah. of the games. He was, was armed. Rage. Uh, very, very sad. Uh, just tragic. <coughs> So once yeah. again, let's not mention the whoever's name it is. No, just, I don't. Nope, no, get no uh, time. I we've, don't. We've just we've we've just decided now. It's, you know, the last one, the Las Vegas shooting. I'm sorry, just not even going to mention. I hate it names. when their pictures blazing over yeah. there. They talk Never. to family and friends. They lionize the person. It's statistically proven proven to cause more shootings yeah, as terrible. well. So. Yeah, just some no. Mention the victims. Show the victims. Yeah. Talk about the victims. The people who's lost lives, limbs, uh, family members who lost their their loved ones. That's the real story, yeah. not the person who did it. That's exactly. Not the person who did it. Um, location history. Let's talk about Google. Uh, we were talking about Google and location history. As you know, the AP did a I thought fairly interesting story uh, which exposed. Hmm. Now, the thing is, I have mixed feelings about this. I kind of almost got in a fight with Steve Gibson over it. So I'm going to let you adjudicate. Here's what the AP said. Uh, they actually hired somebody at Princeton to prove this, that even if you turn off location uh, collection on your phone, actually, we should be very clear in our verbiage, location history on your phone, Google will still figure out where you are, and save it to their servers. If you open Maps, for instance, mm. or, Safa or uh, the browser Chrome, mm -hmm. for instance, because now, here's what I would say, uh, and I got yelled at. <laughs> well, duh, there's a difference between I don't want you to keep a location history of me, everything I'm doing as I use my phone, and but I would like to have Maps work well, of course, as soon as you open Maps, it's going to send to Google servers where you are, download the map, and even keep track of that so you can go back. Um, same thing with search. And I would further say you could turn it off. The problem is Google didn't make it easy to turn it off. They made it all wellingly difficult. <laughs> okay. If you go to location history and say, no, I don't want you to track, they'd still track you. If you wanted to get rid of... You know, the tracking functions, you had to go into web and app activity options right. and go and drill down right to the specific level yeah. that you wanted. This is, you know, it's just like, well, you can do it. It's like, well, this is the equivalent of, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy having the plans here in a filing cabinet in a dark cellar with yeah. Beware of the Leopard written on the front of it. Yeah. I agree they should have made it easier. Yeah. I but mean, I also understand why location history does not equal turning yeah. off all location information. Uh, on one hand, I get where you're coming from. On the other hand, they literally... They 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 put it under you know. It's just it's just you know. So if you're on Android, right, your Google account, data and personalization, web and app activity, and it's very easy to turn it off. Then you just you know hit the button or the slider and you turn it off. But web and app act, web and app activity does not really imply we are going to location. keep mm. a very detailed tracking right. of the location of your that phone was the what, entire time you use it. That's what Steve Gibson said. He said, "There's of course you open a map, you know you're going to be sending location back to Google. That's obvious. But there's no reason Google should be saving that. Right? No." Well, okay, there's a very good reason, money, but, you know. <laughs> well, aside from their own business interest. Yeah. And I, I, I understand that, but I feel like maybe there is a technical reason why they need to, I mean, they're logging it. Uh, if you're doing search, Google says, well, if people search for pizza places, what they mean is pizza places near me, not just, they don't want Manhasset pizza places or pizza places in Timbuktu. They want Great. pizza places why is here. it accessible later on? How long do they exactly. need to keep That's it? a do legitimate keep question. And I couldn't... Like, yeah, and that's what Steve was saying. Okay, fine, you can get it, but it should go away. It shouldn't be preserved. I feel like there's technical reasons why they're preserving well, it, it. There is, and it's... Okay, let, let's put aside any of the theories about, well, it's because they can sell it. It's because they're trying to make a better app. If you're using the Google Maps app, which I do all the time, mm -hmm. it knows where my home is. Right. It knows where my work is. When I start typing an address that I've been to, to before, it will pop in. And I kind of expect that. In fact, it would upset me if I have to type in the address every single time. I find it a little creepy, but that's it's, because, it's a, but that, you know. It, I understand what's going on in the background. Right. And I think there's a lot of people who don't actually understand what they're doing when they're typing that into their phone. So uh, it seems to me what Google should do is just be clearer in its description and give you a button that says, I don't want any location right. information at all going to Google. There was an article I, I tweeted out earlier this week. Um, uh, Douglas C. Schmidt, professor of computer science at Vanderbilt University, digitalcontentnext.org slash blog, Google data collection research. So a dormant, I'm going to quote 
from from some of the key findings. A dormant stationary Android phone with the Chrome browser active in the background communicated location information to Google 340 times during a 24-hour period or an average of 14 data communications per hour. In fact, location information constituted 35% of all the data samples sent to Google. For comparison's sake, a similar experiment found that an iOS device with Safari, but not Chrome, Google could not collect any appreciable data unless a user was interacting with the device. Moreover, an idle Android phone running the Chrome browser sends back to Google nearly 50 times as many data requests per hour as an idle iOS phone running Safari. An idle Android device communicates with Google nearly 10 times more frequently as an Apple device communicates with Apple servers. These results highlighted the fact that Android and Chrome platforms are critical vehicles for Google's data collection. Again, these experiments were done on stationary phones with no user interactions. If you actually use your phone, the information collection increases with Google. But to point out, these were also not phones where location history was turned off. Right. I mean, these were just with standard right. defaults. So nobody had made it any uh, request to Google not to collect right. this information. But I agree with you. They, Google clearly wants to know more about you. And in fact, why else is Android out there? They want there? to know everything <laughs> right. about you. That's why, that's why Google puts out Android. But I mean, okay, quick round table thing. I keep my location turned off unless I absolutely need right. it. Really? GPS turned off unless I absolutely mm -hmm. need it. I take mm -hmm. it you don't. I take it you oh, do. I leave it on all your... the time. I'm back and forth. Mostly I leave it on because I use GPS constantly. Right. Um, but yeah, I... I, I <laughs> it depends on how tinfoil hatty I'm feeling. Yeah. It, it's off security for me. So yeah. a lot of I times just, when I'm traveling, I can't have it off. If I were doing it. what you do, I would probably have it off all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm not running into a lot of situations where I have to worry about people tracking sources or stuff like that. Mm. So it's not as, you know. It's just, uh, also, it, yeah, I, should, I, I don't like giving that information up. If they yeah. want to pay me for it, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's a philosophical thing. And by the way, Privacy I Privacy is philosophical? Well, no. But or I the idea that I, we've given up any expectation of I privacy. I don't mind giving up that information because I get something of value. I don't get paid for it, mm. but I get, you know, for instance, when I get to the airport on Wednesday, Google's going to pop up a thing, a card with my ticket. Uh, that I don't mind that. Now, by the way, uh, if you go to myactivity.google.com, you yep. will see... <laughs> How, the the detail that Google gathers in this is my activity, oh, and I can even Galapagos. Yeah, well mm -hmm. now you know. Uh, <laughs> these are places I've been that Google knows because I carry an Android phone and an iPhone, and the iPhone has mm -hmm. location as well. And they, I can go to any particular year. I noticed in fact, you are, noticed you are hiding Russia from that map, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> and I could say, where were you on June sixteenth, twenty fifteen? And here's, by the way, this looks exactly like today. Uh, the tr the, my trip from home to work and back. Now, don't you find that deeply creepy? No. Because the, I understand. But you, also, I have, you live a much more open life, I think, than anyone else sitting at this mm -hmm. table. Well, and the other thing I would say is, even if you didn't find that creepy, there are things Google can infer mm. from, for instance, right. if you and a person uh, that you like end up at a location and stay there for six hours... Google might make some inferences from that. Uh, there's a great book uh, about uh, all of this written by my friend uh, Rob, uh, who Rob Reed, who uh, at, at the beginning of the scene of the book, it's called it was After On, I think it's called. At the beginning in the scene of the book, coworkers are all gathering together, and one of them gets a pop up for a coupon for a, be a drink, an adult beverage, mm. and and then another one gets a pop up for you know if, if since your team is all together now you should be getting slack or whatever, and of course all of those inferences can be made if mm. it's not just me but it's a, a database of information about a lot of people, right. all sorts of things can be inferred, and oh, yeah. maybe I'll get you know uh, invitations for wedding locations if I spend enough time with a. And if you're in Silicon Valley, maybe a headhunter will show up. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, to jack up the paranoia a little bit, I, on my personal account, if you look at the location data that is being gathered, there's a, most of the places are places I'm not at. There are, there what are, are you doing? I, well, I have devices you're in certain fuzzing. places. You have that, fuzzing yeah, devices? Exactly. Hmm. I, I'm basically flooding the service with a bunch of false data. I'd so, expect that of you, Father Robert. But, but I mean, it's that's that's just one of the. It's like, okay, you want to track me? Go ahead. Let's see if you can make any sense out of the data you're getting. Hey. Although I would I like say, that, I like that. The fact that Google <laughs> makes this information available to me on myactivity.google.com and I can see all this stuff Google knows about me, that makes me feel better. It's not like they're hiding it. Right. They're being very public about it. Yeah. And I, I, that's the thing I always tell people. I don't preach about oh, turn off your devices. It's 
go to myactivity.google.com. If you're not okay with what you see there, mm. then you need to take your privacy. So Facebook seriously. doesn't do that. Apple doesn't yeah. even do that. I mean, Google tells you what it knows about you and gives you the chance to delete it, presuming that they are actually deleting it right. and they're telling the truth, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but you I, see, I mean, I, I trust Google more than I trust Facebook on this, but even so, I don't yeah. trust them worth well, a doubt. Why, so why is that? I think I, I trust Google way more than I trust Facebook or Twitter mm. or any of the social media services, but should I? Is that is that yeah, earned? it's true. I mean, basically, because I, th my experiences with Facebook execs tend to be that all about growing the platform and not about thinking about it so much. Whereas I find with Google people, they do think a little bit more about what they're doing, and they're aware that they are legally. I mean, they've just been hit by five billion in fines right. in the EU. They're more aware that hey, this could cost us some serious money. Whereas Facebook hasn't been seriously slapped down yet. Yeah. And they've come out the Cambridge Analytica. Is that where you're using gold, that essential gold. phone? Is that what you're doing with the essential phone? <laughs> you're having it travel all around the world, Maybe. pretending it's you? <laughs> Actually, I'm in Rome right now. Yeah, I'm driving around yeah. right now. You put it in the back of a car. Kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's true that if you showed this to a, a person on, on the street, the, my activity, and said, right. look what Google's collected from you today, they might yeah. be freaked out. Yeah, I mean, so maybe Google needs to be more forthright about this. I don't mind because it's useful. Now I know, you know, I visited Patrick Norton's Twitter a few minutes ago. I know the news stories I read. I know where I've been, what I've been doing, the audio books I just downloaded. Oh my God. I'm in Tracy right now. <laughs> I'm just, Are you really? Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> <laughs> what? But, <laughs> oh my goodness. No, no I'm just not <laughs> <laughs> Well, you probably don't want to show your activity to other people. Let's put it no, that no. Yeah. All your mapping that stuff that you, you put you think on about just that. <laughs> well, I you know I realize I put my home address up on the screen. That's all right. Well, not entirely. Not the I mean GPS. It's is not like you're. It's, it's all like friends you, here. You take a different route every way home to avoid someone. You know what? Yeah. I mean, it's there's really only two routes you could take to his home. Yeah, there's the <laughs> operational security in your situation is going to be enormously difficult. <laughs> I love it that that some general a couple of weeks ago said what <laughs> soldiers are running around with watches that are telling Strava their location. Yeah. What? That's not that's not prohibited. And so he put out an order saying, "You probably shouldn't be doing, <laughs> doing that." That was just a, a classic case, though, of just, uh, unintended consequences. Yeah. People just didn't think the device manufacturer hadn't locked it down. The soldiers using it didn't think, and oh, there's a base in Djibouti. Even an NSA analyst, there. you could figure out what his home address was from his publicly published information on. Either it was Strava or MyFitness, one of the apps. But this data is all out there. We, I did a story from... Well, and that's uh, kind of my larger point, which is hmm. you may not care if people know you wrote home, but it's the in aggregate, like all of the soldiers running around this secret base hmm. that this data can actually have some real also, dangerous the, this, this We got that with out. Pokemon Go, remember? Yeah. They, they were able to figure out Another one where the of bases were because games. there was no Pokemon Go activity in this like five mile by five mile square. It's like, oh... Okay, <laughs> but I can't go there. We so, go, sorry, I, no, no, I, I, I covered. I covered this at DefCon. Right now, you can find the location of California Highway Patrol vehicle. It mm -hmm. is broadcasting its mm -hmm. location right. unencrypted with default passwords on the login page. Yeah. Same with the National Police of Denmark. Mm -hmm. Playing with South Wales Police in the UK. This stuff is being broadcast all yeah. the time. And you've just got to know where to look for it. By the way, I just realized not only did I reveal my home address, but that I won't be home for three weeks. <laughs> Maybe that yeah, was the you've, smartest. You've, you got the rot But, with but Burke will be there. I got a little want to deal with. Burke. I got a little soccer playing robot keeping an eye That's on it. I'm telling you, dress it up like Chucky. No one will come close to your house. <laughs> Somebody is staying at our house yeah. the whole time. I just it's want Burke. to say that no, it isn't no. Burke. Actually, it's a heavily alarmed retired Marine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. with anger issues. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's my wife. Leave the Marines out that's of this. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we're going to... Uh, one of the reasons I uh, leave every year in September is I don't want to be around for the big iPhone announcement. Ugh. But Who but you are going to pre-order, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, there you go. So uh, we're trying to... Everybody's trying to figure out. Apple hasn't sent out invites yet. I'm trying to figure out because I want to know if I, you know what exactly where I'll be when the when the hammer comes down. 
Is it still uh, like forty three dollars a minute to use the internet yeah, on a cruise yes, ship? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leo spends eight hundred dollars uh, ordering oh, wait, wait, a twelve hundred. I have one of these. Sky Do you rooms. prepay? Do you prepay for your internet access on the ship? I don't use the ship. The ship's internet it's access. It's horrible. It's not internet it's access. It's horrible. There's one. I should say there is one cruise line that has amazing internet access. The Royal Caribbean line. Yeah. I we a couple of years ago we were on the Anthem of the Seas, which is basically a floating apartment building. There's mm -hmm. four or five of They're those. They're all now, floating apartments. Yeah. It's fifty five hundred passengers and but <laughs> oddly enough it had better internet than my house it, they have this thing called voom and i think yeah. it's a dedicated satellite per ship and right they're doing it's a multiple lot multiple 10 gig connection over satellite it's amazing it's amazing yeah. yeah but that's the uh, everybody the else lag's it's like <laughs> welcome to the 1980s like yeah i was gonna say well by the upload no, the lag's speed, not that bad so actually it's pretty good what about upload speed i didn't what do you upload from a ship Photos. Oh, yeah, I guess. Actually, one thing that kills speed on those cruise ships is people forget to turn off all the syncing options on their right. phones. Oh, so yeah. they're taking all these pictures and videos, and suddenly it just right. kills That's the why I, So I'm bringing the Skyrim, which is yeah. an LTE puck. Oh, you use that? Yeah, I love How it. How is it? 99 okay. bucks. So there's two ways to pay for it. It's a little expensive. The day pass is eight or nine bucks yeah. a day. Mm. But it's unlimited for up to mm -hmm. five devices. It's still a pretty good deal compared to what Verizon would charge. Uh, but for 99 bucks, you get a month. So we're going to be gone long enough. We'll pay 99 bucks, unlimited data for five devices. Excellent. Uh, can, I, can I put a public service announcement to any engineers for cruise ships? Yes. Okay, so if you are designing a network for a cruise ship and you have jacks in the room so that the TV can access the on-demand entertainment center, a VLAN is not security. That does not separate me from the internet. Does not separate me from the system that gives internet access. I'm impressed that they've got a VLAN. I do. But so you plug, how do you cross a VLAN? Uh, so it's they didn't they didn't tag anything. Uh, so it, if you know there's a VLAN, you can actually scan to see which VLAN tags are coming through the switch, and you just keep switching VLAN tags so you, you find the, the one that's VLAN. yeah. Oh. Not very good. You're security. the kind of person that gives hotel IT stuff. You were just on a cruise. Ship. Just on a cruise. <laughs> ship. What cruise line was that? At Carnival. Yeah. yeah, they own them all. Oh, by the way, the ship I was on, um, it's the sister ship for a very famous cruise liner known as the Casa Concordia. Uh, the, and one that oh, fell the, over. the one that fell over. Yeah. And it's also the one that caught on fire off the coast of San Diego and got stranded for three days. Oh, but it was fun. It was actually... <laughs> and oh. it actually... They had an explosion on board two days before we came on. You know, so, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a Plus treat. Plus the added bonus of you know, possible non-virus poisoning exactly. as well. Exactly. So. It's like a disaster cruise. <laughs> I'm but just not, excited. I just, I, sorry. Skyroam just solved a whole bunch of problems for me. Oh, yeah. This oh, is good. Hey. Well, I've been, I've been sitting on like a, a, what, like it got upgraded to 50 gigs, but I've been sitting on an AT&T plan because of the data, because yeah. every so often I do like 30 gigs in a month over the phone. And now- I'll be glad to lend it to you when we're not traveling. I'm fascinated by this. So I'll be back because on the 22nd. If you want to borrow it, please do. Absolutely. I carriers, it, but yeah. Carriers do not want high data customers anymore, and they do no. not want to give you- yeah, access to. I have Google data. Fi, which in theory gives you unlimited data. Mm -hmm. You get the same, pay the same price, ten bucks right. a gigabyte. You pay at home. It's not very fast. I think they ride on that two mobile, you know, two G, three G. I also yeah. have T Mobile, two G, three G. Enough for email. But mm. uh, T Mobile, and I'll let, I'll report back. Has a new plan. You pay twenty five bucks a month, and they give you LTE really? as you travel. Ooh. Unless oh. I misunderstood that, because that was I, I'm Ooh. I'm a t I'm, I'm on T-Mobile, and that was the big advantage for me going back home is that I got free data, and okay, it was two and a half you know yeah. two and a half G data, but I still got it free. Um, getting LTE would be very nice indeed. But now um, I'm very nervous that I didn't that I that I bought it. And <laughs> I, I should probably find out if if I bought what I thought I bought. But come back to what you were saying about sort of hacking around in in hotel suites. I don't know if you saw some of the tweets that were coming out at DefCon. Where it was the just thermostat? like yeah, the thermostat. Yeah, the thermostat. It's just like we that, just that found took, out the password. That took all of that. thirty minutes from yeah. people, when people started arriving. What happened? They figured out how to hack the thermostat yeah. so that you could remove the low temperature setting. Yeah, it's like, do you want your your room to be forty degrees? Well, we'll show you how to do that. Well, if and you want your room to be below whatever they set it to, right. hotels must hate but also, it. If, <laughs> oh yeah, but, well, well, I, I mean, this, this is this is why they were throwing people out at this right. year's show, which was a, a major disaster. And also, what happened? They threw people out for what? Um, okay, well, this is a long... That on, was a weird On the one. Wednesday... Yeah. By the way, anybody know my T-Mobile password? I think two and a half million people got leaked, and I can't remember. <laughs> I might be one of them. What's my... Uh, uh, but no, on the Wednesday night, um, Mark Linton from Senior Google yeah. Engineer made a slightly off-color tweet about why would you bother hacking people at DEF CON when all the people with the power you would want to hack a black hat. 
L, the, well, he used attack. Yes, I would attack. He, he did use guy. attack, which um, we understand what that means. Yeah, law enforcement in Las Vegas, not so much with a sense of humor. So, Las Vegas police, yeah, uh, called his hotel, got his contact details, went and had a chat with him. It was all resolved amicably. He put out an apology tweet. They retweeted it and favored it. And then at midnight, he was chucked out of his, his Caesar's Palace hotel room and banned from the facility. Which, when you you know you're trying to get to Defcon, is a bit it. of a handicap. Yeah, uh, and they've now got this policy where they're really cracking down on this stuff. And also, if you have the Do Not Disturb sign on your door for more than 24 hours, you're going to get a, a, the door open by security and searched. They did not get me. Uh, Were you I, staying at a Caesar's property? I or? was staying at a Caesar's property. Mm. Um, the uh, But a uh, friend of a friend uh, had... People pounding on the door. Yeah. While they were trying to, yeah, so, so in response to the attack by the spineless scumbag in Las mm. Vegas, uh, the oddly enough, the they've decided if if they haven't seen your room in 24 hours, uh, you they basically if you read through the fine print far enough, they now have permission to enter your room to do a what? wellness check. Oh yeah. yeah. So somebody, a friend of mine, was like, "Well, who who puts their do not disturb tag on for more than 24 oh, I hours?" Do, the whole week. and I was sitting at a table yeah. and every yeah. single Death hand con. went up. No one already. comes no. into my room no. on Defcon. Are you exactly. kidding me? Well, it's, or at CES. I'm like, you know I know what you do. You just make a little arm room. that will remove one drink at a time from the mini bar every few well, hours. It, it gets worse because yeah. they said, "Well, yeah. we came in, but they just looked to make sure everything was okay. Then they left. Well." Of course, it's people Def had Con, stuff it's moved. Yeah. They so had, they had cameras. Yeah, in people their had cameras of their bags being searched by security. What? So yeah. you're not taking security, photos there's no... of a piles of alcohol and going, "I'm just going to Snapchat yeah, this." Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. People were, you know, got to remember, there's no, there's, there's, there's no control to the access of the elevator at Caesars. Yeah. So anybody wearing whatever a jacket, color, security jacket. Well, it, yeah, yeah, they were, you know, they're like, you know, security's wearing like a, a what do you call those things? A, a polo shirt. Yeah. You Which know? you can buy in the shop. Yeah. So so people, but in several cases, you know, they came in on somebody while they were sleeping. They came in somebody while they were in the shower. Yeah. So, uh, what are you going to, like, mm. is, is this a Caesars thing or a Vegas thing? This is thing? just a it's, Caesars it's thing. It's a Caesars. Well, so you got to remember, so Caesars Power Planet response. Hollywood. There's Flamingo, a whole bunch of the Valleys, Cromwell. They're, they're all, they own yeah. all the properties. But oh, I won't there be seen, staying there anymore. There's, there, yeah. The question is we whether We stay not, at MGM properties. Do they do that? They we don't know. Because uh, this is this just happened to be the cross. This just happened to be the cross section of a a metric ton of private we privacy were at Planet Hollywood last yeah. time yeah. 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 of privacy yeah. sensitive individuals with the rollout of this new policy. So imagine wow. if you know, like that's really bad timing. I'm a, I'm a 230 <laughs> pound ex rugby player. I've had someone pounding on my door and been yeah. freaked out in Vegas because mm. one time it was a you know 200 pound guy on meth who thought like I guess his girlfriend was in there. That was one of my less favorite like Vegas stories during CES. Oh, I don't think I've ever yeah. talked about yeah. that. And, yeah. one. And so imagine if you're a 125 pound yep. female yep. with two guys pounding on your door demanding entrance and you're trying to call the front desk and the front desk is like well I think we have a new security yeah. policy are they wearing yeah. security shirts it's like yeah. well no what does that well, mean yeah, but I mean Katie Mazuris had this exa had that exactly. exact yeah. scenario yeah. and she was on <coughs> speakerphone down yeah. to reception saying can you you know, and, and she's telling them, I'm are. trying to verify your, your identity, and, then, and they're banging on her door. And they're going full aggro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, Mandalay Bay is apparently checking long bags, which is fair enough. But having someone come into, because, yeah. so I mean, this is, so where should I not stay? Vegas. Come stay downtown. <laughs> I'm going to stay with your family. I stay with my yeah, family. And Henderson. No one yeah. searches, my, my mom searches my she room. Searches her, but... <laughs> Robert. <laughs> so this is, I don't know if this is, I, you know, I just, I saw this on the website. This is T-Mobile. They call it T-Mobile One Plus International. I already, you have to have the T-Mobile One stuff. You get free GoGo -Go Wi-Fi. You get unlimited 4G LTE data in Canada and Mexico. So basically you get more unlimited data in Canada and Mexico than yeah. you do in the United States. And then, <laughs> well, maybe this is only Canada That's and awesome. Mexico. Yeah. I don't know. That's pretty good. 25 bucks. They say international, yes. but is it only Canada and Mexico? I don't. Does that pass for international in this country? <laughs> Actually, coming back from Long Beach yesterday, I saw a billboard, a T-Mobile plan. It's specifically for visitors, for for tourists. Mm. Three weeks, unlimited everything, thirty bucks. That's but I mean, unlimited good. means unlimited up to a point, and then we reserve the right. To I, well, yeah. I checked. I checked that. No, yeah. it's unlimited, unlimited. Wow. Ooh. It says here on all T-Mobile plans during congestion, the small fraction of customers using greater than right. fifty gigabytes a month. <laughs> oh, so they upped it. May notice reduced speeds until the next. Fifty gigabytes cycle. a month. That's that's come on, that's, that's decent, a lot of that's data. That's decent. On, and it doesn't that, count but, on network traffic, so YouTube doesn't count. I right. swear, because I was shopping around T-Mobile and a couple other things like that. That 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 was twenty-five gigabytes a month, like three weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Um, 
So that may be a moving when target. Are you, are you traveling soon? Me? No, yeah. I've, I'm, 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 I'm looking to get us off of AT&T. Ah. Oh, good plan. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 like the data and the speed's phenomenal, but... I like T-Mobile. If you don't mind their security mobile. policies. Yeah. I've got to say, I mean, well, I've locked down my account since the, the, the SIM hijacking or thing, but I've just spent a, f a few uh, days in the mountains with no internet access at all, and my goodness, that was fun. I, you know, I'm all prepaid, like, though. You, you're just like, I want to check my... Oh, I can't. I, there, there is literally no internet here, which is, for a European, is weird, because... You know, I have. It's you've got to work really hard not to get cell phone access right. in the Britain or Europe, and over here, three hours drive into the mountains. It's like I've got nothing. Oh, I can drive. I can tell you where to go. Twenty five minutes north of San Francisco and be out of signal. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I'm prepaid Headlands on this, so it doesn't have my real name. It doesn't have a real credit card number. It doesn't have a real address, and it cost me thirty dollars a month. I've had it for. Eight years now, I think. You're going to get yeah. a black bag over your head the Probably. second you leave the studio and leave Guantanamo <laughs> Bay before you know what happens. Or that guy in Tracy, maybe. I, 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 I still don't... I don't have a device in Tracy. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that one. <coughs> don't say it's the wrong way, but you wouldn't look good in orange. No, know? no. I, orange makes you look fatter. See, well, black no, is it's, slimming. Yeah. It's not so much. I'm thinking about Guantanamo... I mean, don't get me wrong. I love dogs, but I get in that kind of situation to be, oh, you're an angry dog, aren't you? Oh, you're going to tear my face off. You know? <laughs> I think this is a British thing, really, though. Well, <laughs> Something's yeah. happening right now. Oh, you're an angry dog, aren't you? Yes, you are. Oh, come on, I'm British. I don't talk to make eye contact with people or talk to them on the but street. You talk but if to there's a dog, it's like, yeah. oh, you're oh, a cute pupper, cute, aren't you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, let's take a little break. Uh, we had a good week this week, and I believe uh, uh, that we have a, uh, I have a specially prepared movie for your enjoyment watch. Previously on Twit. Nothing made me sadder than having to go to Staples yesterday and buy two scientific calculators. Uh, they could have an HP 35 on their iPhone mm -hmm. if they wanted. Mm -hmm. It felt good to that buy something from That's Casio. T-Mobile One Plus. <laughs> they were Cas I just felt like I pretended I was it's buying it. nice. Him. Yeah. Triangulation. There's a guy I, you know, everybody in, in, in Silicon Valley idolizes loves, respects Bill Atkinson, the legend who created the Apple Lisa Quick Draw Mac Paint HyperCard. Wow. Steve dedicated one entire day to recruiting me. He said, think how fun it is to surf on the front edge of a wave and how not fun to dog paddle on the tail end of the same way. <laughs> Two weeks later, I had quit my neuroscience program. Wow. Never finished my degree. Wow. And I was working at Apple. The new screensavers. That's Jillian Ogle. She's the founder and CEO of Let's Robot, a platform where anyone can take control of other people's homebrewed robots over the internet. Jillian said it's okay for me to refer to this as kind of like Twitch for robots. Yeah, so one of the first robots I made was, a ro I called it the bit slapper. Yeah. People would donate bits and then the hand would slap me in the face uh, <laughs> as soon as they donated. And then, like, the first day I turned that thing on, I made, like, $300. So Dang! Oh, like, well, there's, there's kind of something to this. Twit. Test drive one today. Made a lot of fun this week. And more fun to come. I'm going to be uh, leaving after... Uh, uh, this week in Google on Wednesday, but the shows will continue with great guest hosts all uh, week long. Who's hosting all month long? Who's hosting uh, Twit next week? Do you know, Karsten? I should probably check. It's probably next on here. Next week will be Jason uh, Snell. Snell will be hosting Twit next week. And then the week after, <laughs> guy, it looks like some, British, some guy, some, some British guy, bloke, who some just British <laughs> bloke, Ian Thompson, <laughs> Becky Worley will be hosting on the 16th. So yep. that's going to be a lot of fun. No, Lots of sound. good shows. Yeah. It's actually, the shows are better when I'm not here, let's face it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that, though, you know. I, they say, people send me, they tweet at me, go stay home, stay in there, Europe. You, you leave very big you. shoes to fill. No, no. It's... Well, they're not that big. I'm only about eight and a half. So. <laughs> Double E. Our show today brought to you by WordPress. That's where I'm going to put my travel photos. I actually had an epiphany. Uh, I've been posting on social media, right? I thought, why am I doing that? You should always start at your website. And if you're, I mean, as an individual, your website is what people, you want people to find when they search your name. If you don't have that, people will find other things when they search your name. You really need to control that. I tell this to teenagers all the time, get a website. I, when parents have a new baby, I say, reserve their name dot com. Cause, and, then, and I did that for my kids, by the way, and I'm really gratified. Abby set up her WordPress.com site. Henry, I'm still working on him. He says he wants to do it. He says, where can I post my pictures? Facebook just degrades the hell out of them. 
Henry, WordPress.com. If you're a business, man, you got to have your own website. It's like uh, not having an answering machine or a, you just got to have it. Uh, it, it with WordPress and WordPress.com, they do the hosting. They do the security. They do the software updates. You focus on what you do best, create content, talk about your business. It, for me, travel photos. There are no limits. You're free to create the ultimate online hub that's truly yours. You, yes, you can upload images and video and audio and more. You can import and export content to and from your WordPress website. You can email to your WordPress site. It's easy. You can also grow your audience and reach new customers with built-in SEO, social media features, marketing tools. You can do more than just post with your WordPress app. You can moderate comments. You can look at stats. The apps are fantastic. And you can launch your site with confidence because you can get help from WordPress's amazing support team 24-7 whenever you need it. Plans start at just $4 a month. You know, when you, when you add it all up, it's no wonder 31%, almost a third of all the websites in the world run on WordPress. 31% of the internet is WordPress. Get 15% off any new plan right now. Go to wordpress.com slash twit and create that website. It's fun. It's easy. If you've been kind of putting it off, don't. It's really, it's really satisfying. WordPress.com slash twit for 15% off your new website. Go to wordpress.com slash twit. I love the web. I feel like the web, we got to preserve the web and preserve websites. And not, so many people just like, oh, I got a Facebook. No, or a Twitter. You got it. I, we hammered on you, Patrick, for 15 years, 20 years to make a website. There's actually, actually before Cedia, my new website will be up. Because I'm doing a bunch of audio coverage. Excellent. Nice. PatrickNorton.com, will that you be can, it? Yeah. You, you okay. Can, you I can, can't wait. You can tweet it out. We can we do a whole episode on my website and the content on it. This has been an <laughs> ongoing conversation since the screensavers. In fact, at one point, I think we forced you to make a website. Man, you went kicking and screaming. Did you put a bunch of under construction signs and the like <laughs> no, animated gopher? No, it was, it was it, for all Hamsters of, dancing. For all of go. my questionable taste in fashion and vehicles, I tend to be very understated with websites. Yeah, no, I like it. I, I find yeah. that websites are best when they have flashing, like, neon yellow. It's it, it brings uh, really uh, and I drive so. a 1995 Dodge that's missing paint on every single we panel. Go. So there we all have our places. <laughs> we let it out. But <laughs> so uh, while I'm gone, I'm sure Apple have an event. But when it's not clear, typically they do it on uh, first or second week in September. Yeah, yeah. The, the two the second Tuesday after Labor Day, right? They don't want to do mm. it the Tuesday after Labor Day. This year it's September 3rd, so not September 4th. September 11th. Well, they don't want to do it September 11th. I don't think. That would be the second Tuesday. Be a crashing Labor show. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I mean, no, no, say that. They did, actually, in 2012, I did. I looked it up. They had an event that would have normally fallen because they like to do it on Tuesdays on September 11th. They mm -hmm. moved it to the next day, September 12th. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say that's my, my, my deduction is it'll be September 12th. There is some evidence that's the case. For instance, a German phone company who said you'll be able to pre-order the, the phones September 14th on Friday at midnight, which would be comport with a September 12th announcement and another site that said your phones will be arriving on the 21st which is exactly what you'd expect yeah pre order the mm -hmm. Friday after the event phone comes a week later so I think that's a fair guess we pretty much know what Apple's going to announce uh, I mean like well I mean they'll they'll sort of do a slightly augmented 10 a slightly right. augmented 8 no, this is going to be the big evolutionary jump. No, this will be the revolutionary jump. Uh, will it? Will it? I've got my no. doubts. No, but it's just nice to think about. Yeah. It, it, if, I want. I want. I want some. No, actually, since I am running Android right now, they will do something so amazing that you'll have to switch. That I will yeah. be like, I'm going to sell a kidney so I can buy that new two thousand dollar iPhone <laughs> eleven. I I think that's one of the unknowns that'll be interesting is how high can they go. So Samsung followed suit. The Note 9 was a thousand dollars base model and twelve fifty for the model with eight gigs of RAM and a five twelve gig storage. It's, it's amazing what you can get for two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, yeah. What's that? That's, that's a five hundred dollar phone. Five hundred dollar phone with like six phone. gigabytes I'm of RAM using and two hundred fifty six gigs. I bought second hand and it was three hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. by the way, I, I would like to apologize to all of the Apple people who went crazy over the rose gold. I thought that was the stupidest thing ever until. Red. I got, and I'm red like, is okay. pretty. No, I, I kind of like pretty. the colors. That's that's <laughs> the new. Uh, this is the one plus six, the the red one. The, that's fairly new, right? This is fairly new. So you know, it does all the tricks. It's got the facial recognition right. to unlock. It's got the. You were saying you look, love this phone more than any phone you've I do, used. I do, and yeah. it's way more affordable than the phones I was thinking yeah. about getting. Yeah. And, and you know, it does this thing where it's got facial 
unlock, and it's yeah. also got a fingerprint sensor on the back. I thought you weren't able to do that. Yeah. Does it have a headphone jack? Uh, it's got one of those too. Oh, oh wow! And I have I mean, to say, I am. You know, SD I card slot. I am. <laughs> Come on, still. go for the full drive. No, go for the, no, no. What's the opposite of chuffed? I'm still no, pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Peeved. 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 peeved I'm still so peeved about the headphone jack, and now Google oh. followed suit. Thank God it, uh, Samsung doesn't. And all, uh, I, you know, the essential you gave me, I lost that headphone dongle probably in the first yeah. 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It yeah. just doesn't make sense. By the way, let's if, give credit to essential for losing the headphone <laughs> jack and putting the first notch <laughs> on a yeah. phone long before well Apple. Played. Well played. <laughs> I mean, Huawei have kept the, the headphone jack, but they put it in the base of the unit, so if you're actually using it in the car... Your phone falls imme immediately falls down the side well, of the seat. If you have a carrier, actually, it's I actually like to have the 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 headphone jack and the power coming down of it because I was playing around with an E4, mm. um, and I was laughing because it was the headphone jack came out of the top and the power jack came out of the back, um, which is always makes it interesting to figure out how you're going to strap it down so it doesn't become a missile yes, exactly. flying across yeah. the vehicle, and that you can look at it safely when you're driving. Yeah. You know, it's just um, I, I just don't want to let them off the hook on this. No. Because no. No. it's now it's accepted. Well, you're just not going to have a headphone jack, and I think that doesn't make any sense at all. It makes top absolutely or no bottom, sense. It just and and the, the justification that you will, if you want to make a, a water resistant slash waterproof phone, you have to get rid of it. That's bunk. Samsung that's makes an IP68 phone with yeah. a headphone jack. I don't understand. And, and this was well, we can't put a fingerprint sensor on it because it will make it too thick. This is thinner yeah. than mm. the iPhone 10. I don't buy it. Yeah. So I, I mean. <laughs> Tell me that you did it because it's the design. Don't yes. fashion. Don't make something it's up fashion. that I no. can disprove. Or that exactly. they just they wanted to push the sales of of expensive right. earbuds or something. But it was like oh, it was perish. It was, yeah, it was, it was Phil thing, Schiller. Yeah. It comes down to one word: courage. Oh, <laughs> the courage to move on and do something courage. better for oh. all of us. I will take my cowardly one plus six. Thank you the very Germans much. Germans have a lovely word for this. It's a face exquisitely made for slapping. And when he came out with that, it was just like slapping. I'm just a punch. Well, this you guy. think Apple will uh, stop it? thousand bucks on the new iPhone? Are you, you kidding? No, I mean, Two thousand dollars, and we're going to remove the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I can get you a two thousand dollar phone. It's the Pixel th uh, Three from Google. So apparently, there's a Ukrainian black market dealer who somehow got a bunch of Pixel Three XLs. Now, this is a phone that everybody agrees probably won't be announced till October. Although now, thanks to these leaks, maybe that's not maybe it. that's yeah. that's going to be advanced. Because we've been seeing all of a sudden all of these tweets about unboxing. Uh, by the way, yeah, no headphone jack. It'll come with uh, wired Pixel Buds with a Type C connector. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but apparently, this story, and this goes to a nine to five Google. They did some uh, some good uh, leg work. It, it all comes back to this Ukrainian black market dealer who's been selling them on eBay for two thousand. Two thousand dollars each. See, I don't understand this because where would okay, they get it? Supposing it is an actual Pixel Three, the minute it tries to log onto Google servers, it's going to light up. Right, they're going to wait a minute. This doesn't yeah, exist. It's going to be like alerts going off, sirens and it, everywhere. And it came from Shenzhen because <laughs> everything comes from Shenzhen. Yeah. So what you've got to hey. do is rip and put a really lousy operating system on there, yep. which doesn't and ma try and mask the the hardware stuff that it sends out. If you can even do that, which I've got my doubts about. I'm pretty sure the Ukrainian black market dealer doesn't give a rat's ass what happens after he's got two thousand dollars. What I want to know is what's happening internally at Google as they are, you know, as the, the, the internal is, security team is running around trying to figure out what truck these fell off yeah. of. And so here's who the was update when from it fell nine to off. five Google. Uh, the past forty eight hours have been interesting. A source tells us the Google legal and security teams and Foxcom's team are both involved in internal discussions about the leak. They obviously are trying very hard to find out. Foxconn builds it, I gather. Mm. So they're clearly saying, all right, well, because this guy, this Ukrainian blogger, has at least 10 phones. He was offering 10 units to one buyer. Well, the first time one of them connects, they're going to know exactly which batch it came exactly. from. They're going to know yeah. when it was created. Right. They're going to know okay. who was on shift when it was created. Yeah. Uh, there you go. It's over. Presumably, the bloggers who are posting videos of unboxings have not yet turned them on. Maybe. Maybe. Somebody's going to turn it on. But, okay, uh, beyond that, what do you get? Mm. You say, oh, I've got a phone that hasn't First, been released yet. Oh, it looks like every other phone being designed today. Yeah. Yay, well, this is a, this is actually a problem with the culture we've created uh, that YouTubers and others who, uh, yeah. you know, they want to be, the, if you, the that's a million yeah. views if you have uh, the Pixel 2 or Pixel 3 XL. That's a million that's one views. Of the that's that money. Really took me by surprise from YouTube was the number of people who are willing to watch you take a product out of, out of a box. box. 
right? It's just wait until oh. you watch the Oreo unboxings. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for goodness Oreo sake. Oreo cookie? Yeah. What? You take this unedible cookie and then you, you unbox it and then it's somehow... Well, there's there's all these sort of like, you know, I will call them temporary flavors. I think they call them like... Oh, yeah. We have them every Tuesday on All uh, About like, Android. We have a different... Kind of like the grunty flavor. <laughs> have, we, have we run out of flavors for well, All About Android? Well, it's pie now. I want to see pie every week. Although I noticed some Oreos I, last what's the matter I could do pie every week. <laughs> I'm cool with that. I, <laughs> strawberry rhubarb, so apple. You guys know uh, Logan Paul. Oh, that no. It's a he's a boxer, right? I heard about he's that. He's a boxer. He's he a and his brother thief. are boxers. So Logan Paul, who is a YouTube star, <laughs> who generates a lot of views, decided to do a pay-per-view boxing match. Uh, the undercard was his younger brother. Uh, at its peak, 860,000 people paid $10 to watch Logan Paul's fight the other night. Oh, so, well, that's a lot of money. That's $8.6 million, if my math is correct. Thank God there's a lot of zeros in that number. But then one of them got paralyzed and Clint Eastwood had to kill them? No. <laughs> that's, wait, I forget, I'm crossing well, the cry, streams, I think. But what's really <laughs> wild is that that's a small number compared to the number of people who watched pirated streams <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> mm. So uh, it's the same guy that got into trouble in that Japanese forest, yep. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Complete oxygen thief. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the unboxing like phenomenon one. you just <laughs> talked about. They're not boxers. <laughs> to think yeah. there are people who need in need of a good set of kidneys, but no. It's just... So KSI is another YouTuber that they're fighting, and now they've already decided on the rematch next year. Uh, but really, the issue I think is that millions of dollars left on the table. The, their estimate is that one and a half or two million people watched it on Twitch compared to the. I saw a a screenshot Twitch, of one of Twitch. one of the uh, the pirated Twitch streams that was interrupted by someone's mom calling him because it popped <laughs> up on screen and the video froze. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. you see the white supremacist one? What? Oh, this is brilliant. Um, you remember after that white supremacist march the other weekend <laughs> where like yeah. a dozen people turned up? March. One of these guys behind it was streaming. He's living at his parents' place and he was streaming a conversation that he was having with another white supremacist and his dad tells him to get out of his room and go and move somewhere else. <laughs> oh. And so he admits, yeah, Are I'm being sure forced. sure it was real? That wasn't staged? No, no, this was actual, okay. this was real stuff. And it was That's just, part uh, of the problem is no longer will yeah. we know what's real, what's not real. Is it real or is it real real? Yeah, no, it appears to be real real and he was bemoaning the fact that he had to live with his parents because he got so unpopular because guess what? White supremacy is really unpopular. Aww. It's... It's kind of a deal killer in a lot Aww. of cases. Yeah. But, uh, Here's an update, wait, by the so way. I know, I know Logan Paul. I you never know heard Logan of, Paul? Well, no, I mean, I know of Logan Paul. I've I never heard of that. KSI. What's his, what's I don't his know, deal? I don't. It seems to be... I I don't... This whole thing now is like this separate world that I don't know about. Nobody... But but if you're under 18, you know about, I guess. And Who I don't want... Who about... I don't what, know why you look at and, me. And if you look at these sites, <laughs> this, people will put up a, 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 a YouTube video and have 4 million views yeah. in a day. I... I mean, I don't get it. Took, takes us two weeks to get four. We, we just years. need to move on to the next story because I'm trying desperately not to be like, what is this rock and roll? I know. I <laughs> is Johnny B. Good? I feel like I feel the old, old guy yelling at the kids on my lawn. Wow. Is this a popular beat combo that I'm not familiar with? No, but I mean, it's, but no, it's exactly the same. I mean, you come across these people. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. What I'm thinking about is what exactly my boys are going to be watching on what medium, right. whether it's virtual right. or whatever hyper attenuation of short attention spans has evolved online. Well, if you think you're worried, what do you think NBC, CBS, and ABC yeah. are thinking? My relationship is much more personal than That's their relationship. True. There's, That's true. They're worried about their revenue stream. I'm worried about what's, you know, what I am releasing unto the universe yeah. you know well that's the world they're going to be in and my kids is the same thing everybody's kids it's the same thing you two are smart so we send ours to fire a knife children. camp my kids will never watch youtube <laughs> good luck with that okay moving swiftly on Padre. <laughs> little too much information then <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving swiftly on <laughs> i'm just looking for a story any story well, see the verizon the throttling thing yeah, let's talk about California that. California wildfires? I, uh, I am not sure where, to, where I come down on this. So, good, you can tell goody. me. We can have an argument about this. So, right. let's, <laughs> here's the story, which is that uh, firefighters <laughs> from the Santa Clara Fire Department went up to Mendocino. It's about 100 miles north. It's just north of us to fight uh, what has been a horrific wildfire that will continue mm -hmm. until next month. They okay, won't yes, fully control until next month. Yeah. Uh, 
they were using Verizon phones to communicate. Uh, apparently used a lot of data, at which point Verizon... By the way, the Santa Clara Fire Department says, we paid Verizon for unlimited data, but Verizon throttled them, uh, making it difficult for them to you know, provide an emergency response to mm -hmm. communicate with first responders, all sorts of stuff. Freaked out, the Santa Clara Fire Department contacted Verizon. Verizon said, the only way we could fix this is if you pay twice as much. Uh, the vehicle that they're in is is, is actually has a, a SIM card, a Verizon SIM card for internet access. Here's the quote. In the midst of our response to the Mendocino Complex fire, County Fire discovered the data connection for OES 5262. That coordinates all the local government resources deployed at the fire. Was being throttled by Verizon. Data rates have been reduced to one two hundredth <laughs> or less than the previous speeds. These yeah, reduced speeds the severely interfered with the ability to function effectively. My information technology staff communicated directly with Verizon via email about the throttling, requesting it be immediately lifted for public safety purposes. Verizon did not immediately restore full speeds to the device, however. They confirmed the throttling, but rather than restoring us to an essential data transfer speed, they indicated County Fire would have to switch to a new data plan at more than twice the cost, and they would only remove throttling after we contacted the billing department. And switched the data plan. This is in the midst of a f the yeah, worst fire in California you've got history. People on the ground in risk of being burnt alive, and you're trying to sell them a higher data plan. Great. No, no, no. You're not trying to sell them. You're flat out telling them that yeah. the only way they can restore, because you know, people look at me like you know, 22 gigabytes of data is enough for any human being, and it's like I understand what people are saying that, but there are situations where there are you know pretty strong reasons for. I, I guess. One, I want to say, quit calling unlimited things unlimited that are not unlimited. Mm. That's job one. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 just. Say and they they've been dinged in the past by the FCC for doing this. They persist. Mm -hmm. They persist. But I mean, but that's the problem. Is it's now an accepted industry standard. You know, you have unlimited data unless right. you get up to this many gigabytes. Right. Then we have the option of throttling you. I guess suggestions. Mm. There, you know. it's a semantic thing. They're 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 <laughs> saying. No, I mean, sorry, semantics. semantics. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> You're saying... It is say screwed that up, so... Uh, yeah, Norton's so, pretty uh, bad. If it's screwed no. up, it's Norton. Uh, it's a semantic <laughs> thing that uh, it isn't limited. Yeah. It's just really slow, so you... But but you still can get as many bits as you need. Well, yeah, if you can get as many bits... It might take seven minutes for a Facebook page to load, but right. you can get as many bits as and you need. Yeah. interestingly, in the, the old FCC, the new FCC has nothing to say about this, but the old... They said, call the FTC. We don't do that. The new F, The old FCC said, no, no, that's not unlimited. Courts mm. have said, no, no, that's yep. not unlimited. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in an update... Uh, Ours published this. They said hours after our article was published, Verizon acknowledged it should not have continued to throttle the fire department. This is the quote. Regardless of the plan emergency responders choose, we have a practice to remove data speed restrictions when contacted in emergency <laughs> situations. We've done this many times, including for emergency personnel responding to these tragic fires. In this situation, we should have lifted the speed restriction when our customer reached out to us. This was a customer support mistake. Right. We're reviewing the situation okay. and we'll fix this. Customer now that we have been publicly mistake. dragged out over the... And are yeah. Being, yeah. Now that the pitchforks have arrived outside of our... Pitchforks and burning torches have arrived outside of us and our public images have been tarnished once again. But, uh, okay, so this is why I have mixed feelings about this. Mm. You can talk me off the ledge here. <laughs> uh, Verizon says, like all customers, fire departments chose service plans that are best for them. The customer purchased a government contract plan for a high-speed wireless data allotment at a set monthly cost. Under this plan, the plan the fire department bought, users get mm -hmm. an unlimited amount of data, but speeds are reduced when they exceed their allotment until the next billing cycle, just like we were talking about with T-Mobile, mm -hmm. right? No, no, and I understand from a legal and accounting perspective that, you know, that that's a good cover to hide under. Right. But when you've got the largest wildfire in the state's history, yeah. when you've got firefighters on the ground who could die if they don't get the call in time, then that is not a time well, to be throttling. But and I don't what care Verizon what says is their policy is normally to lift these caps. Verizon also said it, quote, made a mistake in communicating with the department about the terms of the made plan. Made a mistake in getting caught. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other thing that Verizon said, which I thought was kind of out of the blue... This has nothing to do with net neutrality. This is BS. <laughs> they it's, was it's, so it's BS in one huge, huge way. Bef that? Before the most recent net neutrality flip back, mm -hmm. there was someone they could complain to. They could go to the FCC. Can't do it they anymore. can't do that anymore. No. 
It's an FTC. FTC, FTC, FTC who's just like, which is we don't so have undermanned yeah. that they, they'll get to this in a couple of years, yeah. maybe. Furthermore, had they still... Be, one of the ways that they repealed net neutrality was Title II. They said, right. mm -hmm. you are... You are the, problem, the way we got net neutrality is Tom Wheeler and the FCC a year ago said, well, we'll regulate these like telecommunications companies. But with the repeal of that, their broadband providers like Verizon are not regulated like telecommunications companies. They're not telco. They're, 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 they're no regulation. If, they if they were telco, you yeah. better believe there would have been recourse, right? Yeah. If the 911 system goes out, if you're a telco, you pay serious fines on that. Whereas something like this, they're just like, well, it was a, it was it was a customer, customer service, customer issue. service Sorry mistake. About that. We'll fire someone in our call center. But in the meantime, about that data plan, it's a nice phone system you've got there. It'd be a shame if anything happened yeah. to it. It sounds like you're doing a real important job. Don't you want to upgrade to the next data plan? Well, that's the thing. Verizon said, well, just so you know, all our plans are throttled. If you don't want to be throttled at all, you have to pay by the gigabyte. Yeah. Then but quit. Calling them unlimited. unlimited. All oh, wait. How much did Verizon throttled. spend in Capitol Hill yeah. last year? Yeah, exactly. Verizon's like, the telco version of Clippy. It looks like you're trying to fight a fire. Yeah. Oddly enough, if the fires were around Verizon buildings, you kind of right. get the feeling, oh, yeah, just release that yeah, bottling exactly right like say, Well, it's about to burn down your tower. So did you yeah. want us to do something about that? It just Santa Clara switched to the $100 plan. You get $100 for the first 20 gigabytes, $8 a gigabyte thereafter with no throttling. This more than doubled its bill. Uh, the, the department said, while Verizon ultimately did lift the throttling, it was only after County Fire subscribed to a new, more expensive plan. Yeah. It Mission just, accomplished. Yeah. Well, well Shameless. Verizon ultimately got what they wanted. But we all face that, right? I mean, uh, I don't think they should use the words unlimited, but we all know that there are going to be, there's going to be, there will be throttling. Well, then, as, no, but I mean, as then stop calling it exactly. unlimited. <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 I mean, the, the tech industry is the worst for this. Remember when 4G, they were just coming out with 4G and yeah. it was like, is it LTE? Is it WiMAX? Is it augmented 3G? And, you know, the, the ITU said, no, no, this is what is 4G. And the industry said, I don't care what you're saying. We're calling right. this 4G. And they're doing, you know, time and again with unlimited yeah. plans. And with, then you know, iPhones that didn't have 4G suddenly had AT&T calling it 4G. Yeah. Like, it's just smoke and mirrors. And it, it, in this case, people's lives are at stake. And that really grips my muffin. Well, I mean, that's what happens when you, you, you go Wait from a, a very heavily regulated control. What part of you is your muffin? <laughs> <laughs> family show. Well, no, no. Whoa, whoa, the, whoa. The, the actual <laughs> phrase is grip something else, but it's a family no, show. I so I like grip my muffin. <laughs> show like title. That. Show title. <laughs> if you can get me a muffin, I'll grip it for you. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no, that's a mental image which is going to linger. Right. Okay. <laughs> Our show today brought to you. <laughs> Ian's muffin gets Where are they gripped. Happy? <laughs> they got the they got the good placement by Betterment, the investing tool for those who refuse to settle for average. Betterment is a smart way to manage your money. I am not allowed, according to SEC rules, and unlike some, I adhere to SEC rules. I am not allowed to be a customer because I can't do an ad if I'm a customer. If you start putting away money now for retirement. The sooner you start, the more you'll have at the end. I wish I had started earlier. Betterment is the way to do it. It's the largest independent online financial advisor designed to help customers build wealth, plan for retirement, achieve their financial goals. Uh, Betterment's a fiduciary. They make recommendations in your best interest. They are not incentivized to recommend certain funds. They don't have their own investment products to sell. And better yet, while there is a management fee, it's a very low management fee, 0.25%, 25 basis points, and there are no transaction fees. Once you pay, that's it. It trades on your behalf, sometimes even daily, every minute, sometimes no additional cost, no transaction fees. You pay the one low management fee, that's it. These are tax invest, uh, efficient investment strategies. Um, hidden costs, nowhere to be found at Betterment. No matter who you are or how much you invest, you get everything for one low transparent management fee. You know exactly, and it's uh, 25 basis points is nothing. I mean, it's really great. Betterment gives you constant access to information and tools that allow you to track progress towards your goals so you can always feel like a smart, savvy investor. I love the technology. I've looked into it. Have you seen the Betterment ads on the internet? I think they're on TV, too. Do we... Do we so they got this one. Do you from from Billions? If you watch Billions, I have. No. Oh, it's awesome. She's awesome. And if she told me to do something, I would do it. Betterment. Maggie Siff.
Investing, of course, involves risk, but you can get up to one year managed free. For more information, visit betterment.com slash twit. Betterment.com slash twit. Betterment. Outsmart average. Make the most of your money. Someone you can trust, someone who's not trading to make money for their behalf, but to make you make a better investment. Betterment.com slash twit. Okay, I'm a good spokesperson, but if you can get Maggie Siff. There's so many good shows that I need to catch oh, up on. It's on Showtime. I, there's, there's that. Yeah. I have not watched any Stranger Things. I heard, I know, I know, I know, bad, bad, bad person. Do they, is there, um, do you have Netflix at the Vatican? We you have must. a very complicated network that I'm going to stay away from. Oh, you don't, you're not being brought in to fix that? I, no, no. You're not no, going to no, set up no, rockets? Vatican I'm City. setting up my own. Vatican I, I, City has got some really interesting communication yeah. systems built yeah. in. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a network. Uh, this is a callback to early in the show. Hope not. That, well, you, you could call it that, but... Um, you're not. No device that's not from the network can connect to the network, and no device on the network is allowed to leave. So it's it's like. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's the same for priests, right? <laughs> kind of, yeah. So basically, it's and suddenly a hotel network. California came you up in the background. Can't leave yeah. the network. You can't. So any device that's on the network, if you disconnect from the network, it's disabled. And you can't ever Completely. join again. You can't ever join. And again. what's the theory there? Well, it it maintains security of the network. There's never a device that you can plug in and start siphoning data off. And if you have a device on the network and you take it off, it's disabled. Interesting. So the theory being that somebody explodes. was hacking it, that would be the behavior. They're just not going to leave it on the it's network. It's not even connected to the, to the internet. Yeah. Oh, it's an internal network. It's a, it's a completely separated oh. network. It's a LAN. Well, because you know, they were asking, well, how do we make this secure and be able to access it uh, from remote? And we're like, you don't. Right. Mm. The, the second you connect it to the internet, just assume that it's going to get attacked. It's like it's Hotel California. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said your, that. Your device yeah. check in. Oh, you already uh, said yeah. that? I wasn't listening. I, this year, I it's... Know. MN7 uh, has it. It's it's the system from Battlestar Galactica. Oh, yeah. It's a completely that's why, standalone That's network. why Galactica has survived, that's right? right? It wasn't connected to mm -hmm. anything. It's uh, like Hotel California. Yeah, you uh, can yeah. never leave. <laughs> I've learned everything from old Eagles songs. That's uh, <laughs> security. But they won't the let Eagles. you go near that. There's somebody else who does that. Uh, it, I shouldn't. It's it's not good manners to mess with someone else's network. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. yeah. Not saying I. Plus, no. they'll know. But basically, the show <laughs> is full of people snip. with bad manners. By the way, I just want to point yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, IBM has patented. Oh, this one. Oh. <laughs> Drone delivery of coffee. Good. Yeah. Me. Based on a cognitive state of an individual. Right to your mouth. Uh, co <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coffee or other drink, for example, a caffeine containing drink, is delivered to individuals that would like the drink or who have a predetermined cognitive state using an unmanned aerial vehicle. UAV or drone, the drink is connected to the UAV and the UAV flies to an area, including people. Users uses sensors to scan the people for an individual who has gestured that they would like the drink or for whom an electronic analysis of sensor data indicates to be in a predetermined <laughs> cognitive state. Sleepy. This is amazing technology, by the way. I love this. The UAV then flies to the individual to deliver the drink. The analysis can include profile data of people, including electronic calendar data, which can be used to determine a potentially predetermined cognitive state. And I then have a kettle. Works fine. <laughs> Leo, this is the future. Yes. Is Why the would future. IBM patent this? Think about this. I mean, oh, because IBM throws patents out left, right. Is this a joke? It's a no, joke. This is, it was this, is lay, yeah. this is laying down potential future litigation so that they can get a, a you know a couple of cents every time somebody actually comes up with this chance. Someday somebody's like going to do this and we're going to sue the hell out of it. Pretty them. much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is IBM's intellectual property business plan, so, you know. Hey, this, this is the on-demand, just-in-time economy taken to its ultimate level. You have a drone that delivers mm. an Axe body spray when it detects body odor above a certain level. It, if it detects that you're British, it gives you a quip toothbrush. I mean, these are the kinds of ah, things ah, that are going to drive just couldn't commerce let it go, could well you? into the future. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Did we get paid double for this ad? <laughs> My teeth are fine, by the way. <laughs> also uh, patented storage area network relocation utilizing drones. 
Oh, what? What? Oh, wait, wait, Move what? your sand with a drone. Uh, yes, uh, that uh-huh. just sounds so... Huh. Oh, okay. Bueller. <laughs> And, I mean, yeah. and here's a Daily Mail article. Is this the office of the future? Workplaces may feature coffee delivered by drones, holographic employees, and robots. Well, if it's Daily Mail article, I'm surprised <laughs> it isn't also saying that Diana was killed and uh, <laughs> immigrants are going to kill us all. And, you know, oh, and look at this woman in a tight top. Isn't she a slut? That's the Daily Mail standard for standard way of doing things. Um, well, there's tension. I feel I feel oh, this tension. It's, it's the Daily, Daily Mail, Mail register. No. Okay, I got this. No, no, it's it doesn't call the Daily Fail for no good reason. Whoa. Um, but on the coming back to the IBM pattern thing, it it comes across as just like they're not even close to doing this. You know, it's just like, well, if somebody did come and do this, then if we file this pattern now, then we can come round to them and just, you know, you know, it'd be, be nice if you gave us a few little. We have the patent that. for that. Yeah, I mean, IBM does have a ridiculous war chest of patents. I'd say oh. at least half of them are completely unenforceable, but they have them, and they yeah. can sue you with them, and they can mm-hmm. license them out. How about this? Drone delivery takes wing for Milford's tilted kilt. Tilted <laughs> kilt. The bomb you don't eatery. What is? Let it go. <laughs> don't, you, you don't want to know what that is. I don't. Know. I don't. This is uh, from the Connecticut and Rhode Island. This is something I should journal. not Google, right? The tilted kilt. It's uh, Milford, Connecticut. It <laughs> just sounds. It's like a Hooters without the wing. And <laughs> oh, the uh, okay. No. Made the world's no. first delivery of chicken wings by drone from its oh, Milford wait, they do restaurant. Have the wings. They do have wings. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Never been. They got wings, baby. <laughs> Oh yeah. Gosh. One of the things I always find funny about California, because you know, I got married in a kilt, we have family tartans. That's they, why they, I saw that story and I yeah, said, Yeah, but they have, Scot- they have a Scottish festival in the Bay Area in, uh, I think it's Livermore, and they have it in August. So it's 100 plus degrees. People are wandering around in kilts. It's not a good place to, to hang out if, you, oh. if body odor is at oh. all worrying for you. Um, but yeah, the tilted kilt, I think I'll give that one a miss. I think we could wrap this. Uh, well, now that we're talking about kilts and body odor, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think we finally reached. Could, could, could be. Uh, stasis <laughs> with the weird patent, the drone patent. Well, if you thought porch pirates were bad, wait until people start hijacking drones. You know, yeah. and it's, yeah. it, it's not going to be pretty. Fortnite, the worst scenario we anticipated happened. So remember, this is Fortnite, which made $150 million on iOS and begrudged the $50 million of it that they had to give to Apple. Said, well, when we're going to be on the Android, we're not going to go through the Google Play Store. No, you can sideload this and we'll get all the money, which many of us pointed out is potentially a little risky. You have to turn on sideloading and Android and so forth. Well, it turned out. The installer they put out for Fortnite, which was a two-part installer, one of those things where you download a small thing and it downloads the rest, Mm -hmm. could be reprogrammed by an app on the phone to, instead of downloading the second part of Fortnite, download any arbitrary app at all. Absolutely shocking. Whatever malware you're in the mood for. You see, I'm kind of torn on this one because I can understand why they did it. Because they've already created a great game. Why on earth should they pay 30% surcharge to, to Google or Apple? But at the same time, from a security standpoint, it's just... Not a good idea. And it's also from an optics standpoint, because it looks like your greed outweighs your mm. customer Care security. Your users. Yeah. Right? This this is the Sony Rue kit. This was yeah. it got installed, it was supposed to do one thing, and people quickly figured out it's so poorly written, I can make it do anything I yeah. want it to do. Although in Sony's case, they did kind of shoot themselves in the feet with both barrels when they said most consumers wouldn't know what a root kit was, so why should they worry about well, it? Well, nothing to worry about. F Secure yeah. actually had that printed up on t-shirts and gave them out to journalists so we could wear them to Sony press conferences and you've never seen someone's lips get so thin the minute they saw it it's was true. what was going on it's very true so we should say that's been fixed Google fixed it uh, pretty quickly well yeah but oh. I mean I do think it, the, the 30% thing's got to be looked at because that's a hell of a bite to pay although yeah. there, there is a bigger Fortnite story in the news right now oh okay and, and that was that uh, the DP, DPRK uh, the Democratic People's mm. Republic of Korea their news agency released a story that, oh, that Kim the- Jong-un Played Fortnite, and the very first time he played, he got 99 kills. Very first time. It was amazing. This is the same news agency that said the first time he played golf, he scored six (laughs) holes in one. You know, I mean, (laughs) I'm kind of being. (laughs) Call me Mr. Picky and Mr. Cynical. I'm not sure if that's good good press for Fortnite or not. No. No, but, um, you know, he's he's the leader of best career. He can do anything. Wait, Leo, you don't play Fortnite. I love Fortnite, but I. 
I don't know if what I do could be called playing because I get killed. I I'm waxed almost immediately. I get off the <laughs> get off the glider. I run over to a house. Somebody shoots me. But then I can watch the rest of the game, which I really enjoy. Do, mm -hmm. Does Henry play Fortnite? Yeah, probably. Does he play with a keyboard and mouse? Does he hook a keyboard? That's and mouse how up? I play. Although we have oh. it on the no no no, uh, we have it on the Xbox and he has it on the Play oh, okay. PlayStation, I think. So he plays with a with a gamer game controller. But I like it with a keyboard. And mouse. Should I start playing Fortnite? Oh yeah, you don't play Fortnite? I don't. Neither oh, do you're I. a gamer. You would love it. Oh. It's battle royale. You understand, I, right? Is this is so? A hundred people go in, only one comes out. It depends on whether or not you can stop playing when you're done. It's so no, need to be done. That's no, so, I can't. You know, it actually yeah. is interesting because uh, you know PUBG. Player Unknown's right. Battleground, which was also a battle royale, came out earlier, and everybody loved it. But as soon as Fortnite came out, everybody went, "Oh, that PUBG, forget it." Wasn't that that was weird? It's like forget it. How quickly? PUBG and I just think there are a couple off. of things Fortnite did well. First of all, PUBG was very, very realistic. It was yeah. like Call of Duty. Uh, Fortnite is very it's much cartoony. cartoony. Mm -hmm. It looks like Overwatch a little bit. Yeah. It's fun. There's building, which is kind of interesting. You build forts, you build mm. uh, blockades, you. Yeah. Uh, and Watching people build things in Fortnite may actually be more interesting than it's fat, playing well, Fortnite. <laughs> and that was, yeah. to me, the revelation. I didn't mind dying because it is a great spectator game. And that's when I realized esports is going to happen. Yeah. Because mm. it's actually it has, fun. Has yeah. happened. Well, it's done. Yeah. It's except over. for the it's fact happened. that every every esports group says they are the fastest growing esports agency mm. on the planet. Well, whatever. There's going to be but a lot you of look hype at, around. If you look at the top 10 earners in YouTube, a lot of those are esports yeah, players. That's true. Yeah. I do hope what just happened in Jacksonville is not a bad omen of what's going to happen. This was an esports event. It was a mm. Madden NFL event. Well, I mean, anytime you get people together and passions get high and you have some people who are maybe a little unhinged. And you have no concealed yeah. you, carry rules. Right. It's That's going to happen. I mean, Everyone goes crazy. The, the, it's the not trick an accident. is not to have this, a weapon when you go crazy. This keeps happening mm. in Florida. This is not an accident. Well, it happens a lot of places. Yeah, but yeah. It, a lot in Florida lately, right? Well, it's very easy to get weaponry in Florida. I mean, it, I think that's my call, point. Call me Mr. Picky, but there does seem to be a correlation between easy access to weapons and people actually using them. Yeah. There are some people in San Bernardino who might argue that. Well, yeah. There's, there's mm. lots of weapons everywhere, God yeah. knows. Um, but you've got Parkland, you've got uh, the, uh, the, or, the uh, True. disco shooting in Orlando, you've got... But all done with legal weapons, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Um, anyway, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a, a, such a sad radical. story, and I bring it up only because it's an. E, it was an esports event. Yeah, and that that is not a. But no, I mean esports and a really huge is esports event. It's mad. Yeah, yeah. Esports is one of those things that I was kind of seriously. People would want to watch someone else play a computer and game. Yes, and yes, they yes, do. They do. And yes, but they do. Watch Fortnite. I'm just telling you, because there's so much complexity to the game, and truthfully, you don't have a shot in heck of winning it. <laughs> so you might as well just watch or finishing it for that. The really good people. Well, there's nothing to finish. You you know you well, yeah you, yeah I mean you, yeah you just have to keep playing until you maybe get to 98 or 97. <laughs> This is why I stopped playing Counter Strike. So, you know, when it first came yeah. out, it was great fun. And then I tried logging on last year, and it was, oh, I'm going over this, poof, dead. Okay. I can tell you though, I'm not bringing any video games on my trip. Thank you. No, <laughs> I'm. Uh, I also did something. Not even Rocket League. <laughs> I did something maybe a little controversial. I have I've already deactivated my deactivated my Facebook. I took Twitter private mostly because I'm just not going to use it, and I uh, deactivated Instagram. I don't have Instagram, Facebook. I use only for logging into other services. But I still so Twitter is the one service I let myself use. Yeah, I don't because it makes I me angry. I don't use Instagram. I, 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 they all I make figure. me angry now, and yeah. I I think I will have a happier vacation. Yeah. So I'm gonna as I was. Oh, so this is for the vacation, not permanent. No, I th well, I, I never never say permanent, but yeah, I think it's permanent. I I feel so much better, and I think that the, the issue was on vacation. I like to post pictures. Oh, I have a website. Mm. Crazy. You know Crazy. how much happier I was the last two summers when I had when I was I went into you were in silence. silence. Yeah. Mm. And then when I came back, it's like, do I really want to do social media? I mean, I guess I should, but it was so much better when I didn't have to and when I didn't have to yeah. listen to people. You know, no, when I was away a couple of days, you know, out of, out of contact to get for a couple of days, I read two books. Yeah. You know, and it was just like I went geez, outside, really I saw the grass. grass. <laughs> I was that's, like, what is this? That's stuff? why I have how many books on my uh, Audible uh, that no, I'm reading. No, this was actual me. Dead Tree where they. <laughs> no, take I don't. I can't <laughs> we I have listen. a lot of those in the in where I'm going. Yeah, <laughs> I have one of those in my car right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what fun it has been! Thank you guys for being here. I, if I could pick a, a bunch of people for my last show, this would be it. Father Robert Ballas here. He's going to do the last rites in a moment. <laughs> he is uh, 
uh, going to going to Vatican himself, going to the Vatican Man. himself. Uh, what later this weekend? Uh, at six o'clock a.m. on Saturday. I'll see you uh, in the air, maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, I will be. Uh, let's see. It's six. Saturday, I am flying out. I arrive on Sunday, and then Monday is a big meeting with all the funny hat people. Which sh I should be you totally. You the funny hat meetings? Some of them. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do they give you a hat to wear? No. <laughs> like, a, like a little hat? No, there's yeah, going to be a circle hats. of funny hats, and you, you they're know, all going like to be staring at the pocket. little black hats or anything? <laughs> Nothing? No hat at all? We don't. I, there are. I could wear a cincher if I really wanted What's to be weird. a cincher? Uh, a cincher is around my waist. So oh, they'll okay. all be, will they Beretta, all be wearing it's one? It's like the Jesuit cap, but no. I, I wear, I don't even wear clerics. I'll, I'll be wearing my Jesuit polo. You're wearing a polo shirt to I a co college of cardinals? Well, I didn't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> so I look up cinchers and I find a page. The community college of cardinals. <laughs> Remember, Thank you, Jammer Bees. what has been seen cannot be unseen, Leo. Be careful what you search for, especially during a live show. <laughs> I find a page of cinchers on Pinterest. We'll just leave it at that. Oh, okay? no, 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 no. <laughs> Patrick Norton always has always given me the best advice. Like a brother, he steered me clear of a lot of trouble. You'll find him at techthing.com, T-E-K-T-H-I-N-G.com. And he's still on the Twitter at Patrick Norton. And True. you and Snubs do tech thing every week, and we people do. should watch and subscribe and download. It's awesome. Anything else you want to promote? Uh, AVXL, the uh, home theater and audio podcast I do with Robert Heron. That's awesome. A-V-E-X-C-E-L dot com. And lest we forget, this week in computer hardware True. every week with Ryan Shroud on this here network. So much conversation about GPUs and SSDs. Actually, I wanted to ask you about the ARM roadmap that they put out, which I thought was very interesting. ARM basically <laughs> saying, we're going to make desktop processors in the next year or two. I think it's going to be, <laughs> I think that was a complete and total shot across the bow of Intel. Oh, yeah. I think we've heard a lot of noise that indicates that Apple's going to start bringing, certainly at the entry level uh, or the lower levels, uh, start bringing their laptops onto their, you know... ARM processors. Yeah, they're yeah, A11, 12, A12, 13, yeah. 14, and, 15. And they should because they are really hampered. They're hurt by Intel and Intel's inability to follow their own roadmap. They thought, Apple yeah. thought they were going to get 10 nanometer parts this year. Yeah. They did not, and that hurt Apple because people are saying, where's the new stuff, Apple? Yeah. And Apple said we can't, well why well, they did absolutely like I, I I have I have a lot of issues do it yourself, with Intel processors you, yeah well it, you know they do it yourself until you can't but Apple I think at this point they they have enough talent bought enough talent and arms certainly they have doing more than a work. thousand yeah. chip designers yeah at Apple but Apple, is, Apple went big and it's also the the majority a huge amount of the revenues coming off of iPhone right, sales right. but I I think it's going to be interesting to watch them and then what happens with with Apple and then what happens with Chromebooks and then what happens with kind of you know Windows Universal applications I, I think i think intel's about to enter a world of hurt that they could not have imagined two years ago i completely mm. agree i completely uh, agree it's interesting because it, uh, there's a story we didn't cover but intel lobbied hard to get microsoft to put an intel chip in the surface go mm. apparently that was designed for arm yeah and yeah. uh it sure frankly is. i have an arm-based uh windows machine i have that hp nvxl and it's really hard to use it's pretty yeah, slow so mm. limited yeah wow. but maybe with the 850 of, which is going to be the next generation possibly. qualcomm snapdragon <laughs> designed kind of more for desktop maybe may, maybe next year maybe the what is it the cortex a i don't know whatever there's a i mean there's a lot of i mean the 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 surface laptops are it's, it, there's just not enough cooling to deal with the amount of processing they're trying to put on those at any level mm -hmm. at this point for the right. Intel processors. Yeah. The, the amount of performance that we want out of our laptops, yeah. it will derate any part. Yeah, it's, well, it's got to the thermal. But I mean, friend of, requirements. A friend of mine had a three thousand dollar Surface laptop yeah. and mm -hmm. was like, "It's slow," and I'm like, "How slow?" He's like, "Really slow." And I had that next to like a two year old. It was like a Core i seven loaded. Um, Surface Book versus at the time, uh, you know, a a Dell XPS 13 that was two generations processor Core i5 behind, which was, you know, handily beating in rendering. Now, if you're not, if you're, I mean, we were arguing about this on, you yeah, because I bought that i9 yeah. MacBook mm -hmm. Pro, mm -hmm. and but it's a bunch of that they fixed in firmware, but but it's also it's like if you expect certain things out of your laptop, they are not delivering. Now, hopefully, some firmware updates have made that better, but. It's tough to do passive cooling with most processors these yeah. days. Because 
it's going to be really interesting in the next two or three years. Yeah. I really think we've, and it, boy, you could tell Intel's shivering in their boots. It's not when good for TMSC them. and and Samsung are ahead of them in They're process seven technology. Seven nanometers. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's the part where everybody's looking around, going like, <laughs> you yeah. know, WTF. Well, no, I mean, you yeah. you were exactly right when you said Intel's sort of walking <laughs> into this. I was I've been covering that done the last couple of financial trans financial reporting, and then it was like, well, we won't be coming out with ten nanometer until next year, and then it was like end of next Late year, next year. Yeah. and you yeah. know it it's going to overrun if they're going to do in volume and data center is still way behind the thing and let's not forget the speculative execution flaws <laughs> still spectrum, there meltdown in the still new still one there. uh for what is it for shadow mm -hmm. i mean it, not only is it still there they're finding more yeah. I and mean, they're not going to stop finding more because it's a flaw yeah. a fundamental flaw in speculative execution and in the meantime I'm, you've yeah. got amd killing it with their ryzen architecture yeah. you've yeah. got yeah. nvidia Epic doing well. amazing things with gpu technology yeah. and it's like well What's left for Intel? Yeah. Well, you, 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 we'll find out. Like, yeah. can they pull it together? You know, I mean, at this point, it, it feels like this. But the other thing is they make a lot of money in places other than processors. Right. Mm. Um, this know. is why I'm not retiring. I think it's going to be a very interesting it, few it, years. It was, it I was hope you gents Brian will Krasnich come and join me. said, which is really quite shocking, which is with the Epic chips, Intel's goal is to keep AMD below a 20% market share. Now, their market share in the data center at the moment is 1%, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So they were saying they're expecting to get <laughs> We're in deep trouble, this. but at least if we can keep them at below 20%, we can survive. Yeah. Well, That's it, Ian Thompson. He's from the <laughs> register.co.uk at I-A-I-N. T-H-O-M-S-O-N. Yes. My parents and I have had words about that. <laughs> <laughs> On the Twitter. Yeah, that's why I like doing this show, because I think this is one beat where things are changing all the time. It's always fun. It's always interesting. So I'm going to go away for three weeks. But, well deserved. Uh, but I hope I come back. <laughs> 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 no, I will be back. Thank you, everybody, for Sorry. joining us. Thanks for a great studio audience, too. Captain Sam was here. She's left the Merchant Marine. She's, she's going she's gonna to move in with us. Josh from uh, Georgia and Peter from Sydney who brought our soccer the playing robot. robot. That the was robot. great fun. Yes. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, we open uh, the doors uh, for this show. And if you want to be here in the studio audience, all you have to do is come to Northern California, the Petaluma area, some Sunday afternoon. Email tickets at twit.tv so we can put a chair out for you. You can also watch us live, do the show live from anywhere at twit.tv slash live. If you do that, please get in that chat room there. A bunch of people watching live at the same time at IRC. Dot twit dot TV. They're nice people, good people, attractive people, and they will not bite. They might kick you like a soccer ball, <laughs> but they will not bite. <laughs> That's the robots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we also make on-demand versions of everything we do, including this show, available at our website. Do watch that Bill Atkinson interview. Part two is coming out next week. He was great. Twit.tv. And as with all our shows, you can subscribe with your favorite podcast application, it's, uh, Overcast, um, Pocket Cast, we love Pocket Cast. Apple's uh, podcasts, Google's podcasts, Stitcher, Slacker, all of all of the above. Just look for Twit, and you'll find it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Another Twit, as I have been saying for 13 years, is in the can. Bye bye. Doing the Twit. Doing the Twit. All right. Doing the Twit, baby. Doing the Twit. All right. Doing the Twit. Is your is the robot ready to play? She plays soccer, you know. Oh, this is one Probably of those. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's doing that all autonomously using its own uh, cameras and recognition, right? Hey! Oh! Whoa. <laughs> Wait! Oh! Oh! Yes! Oh my God! That is impressive. <laughs>